Welcome, welcome, welcome to Liberal 12th Man Show. I am the Liberal 12th Man. And we are going to be doing a pretty cool show today uh, because we're going to be getting into some of the Dr. Frankenstein, or Frankenstein, however you pronounce it, uh, is uh, those, those productions that we put together are going to be introduced to the public. And we're also going to be going into some of the, what you saw in the thumbnail, which is uh, I wanted to get in on uh, some of these players that are going to be, uh, or at least these three players particularly that are going to be uh, leaving the team, you know, uh, at the end of the year, pretty much. I, I think it's pretty much assured that um, some of, or at least one of the players will be leaving possibly, uh, if not all three. So um, kind of get your read on that as well. I brought with me today the Irishman. Brian, how are you doing? Very well, very well. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm just like uh, recuperating from uh, last night. Yeah. It was a uh, fun little night of um, of DJ of DJs and you know legendary DJs and stuff like that, and reminiscing and and such and the such. Got a little bit of that going on for the, for this evening as well. And uh, but for right now, I'm just going to be firing up the library bird and just kind of like you know relaxing taking a nice little like, you know, bird's eye view of the world a little bit to kind of like just enjoy uh, enjoy the afternoon. So we'll see how it goes. So hey, um, big up to Nigel, by the way. Yes, definitely. I uh, hope that you're well. Uh, big up to everyone that's in the chat, by the way. Um, I know that a lot of people have been waiting for what we have in store for you. Um, I guess what uh, I know, like uh, I was, I wasn't sure if we're going to save it to the end or, or save it to, for the beginning. But uh, actually, J.K. just just made the gates before we wow. left. Yeah, yeah, they're He's running the across course. the tarmac. Who's that? Yeah, across yeah, the tarmac there. Yeah, yeah. Big up, J.K. Big up, J.K. How are you doing? Big up, bros. Big up. Have you guys are cool? Yeah. All right, J.K. Yeah, yeah, all yeah. Good, all good. Holy. You know, another day in paradise. Um, <laughs> um, so, so yeah, so I figured that we would do, we, let's just do, uh, do the fun stuff first, you know, kind of get everyone in the mood okay. and, um, this is going to be basically the introduction that I had for, we all made, uh, those of us that, uh, weren't with us on this, on the earlier previous flight. We made our own perfect footballer, okay? So we went through and we kind of got selections. You couldn't choose You couldn't choose the same player twice. So if you had a player, you had to kind of, you know, pick, um, let's say you wanted uh, Ronaldo, you know, you had to pick Ronaldo um, for the, let's say, for the left foot, and you want to pick Ronaldo for the right foot. Well, guess what? You can't. So we had to make up our minds on who we're going to play, or who we're going to uh, pick, what what uh what body parts what all the the uh, skill sets and everything else that we're gonna be put into this Frankenstein body you know so we ended up doing it a uh, pretty cool cool pretty cool um cool way of doing it and it was a fun fun night actually too so I have constructed it to kind of visualize what we've what we've done and uh, if you guys are ready let's uh let's have some fun with this all right let's cool. Go. All right, so um, we're gonna go. I went with. Um, we're gonna bring you guys to the lab, as you can see. Our patients mm -hmm. on, the, on, the, on the gurney there. <laughs> Blood <laughs> everywhere. Yeah, right. Like so, mm -hmm. so we're gonna take all these players, all these different types of players, and just bring them into one. Right, bring them into one. Chop them all up. Chop them all up. Yes, and we got Igor. To help us bring it in, yeah. to say it's alive, it's alive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to go. Yeah, yeah, well, there he is. There's Igor. There's Igor. Right, right. You gotta, you gotta get the, got the electric going and everything. The lightning. And all right, let's begin this. So, this was my player. Um, so we went with. I went with Balotelli as my body, um, and. Uh, I don't know if that brings back bad memories for some people. Unfortunately, it brings me back a little bit of a, of a harsh memory for myself, considering I really, really 
wanted to see him play well for us. I wanted to kind of see we didn't get the we didn't get the city Balotelli. We got kind of like the I don't know living in the city. I don't play football Balotelli. Yeah, <laughs> I, don't I don't know what it was. I don't know what oh, it was. Man. He was just yeah, it was pretty ugly. But anyway, um. So, yeah, so Brian's going to go through these players, and he's going to announce all these players. I'm just going to bring them up. I'm just going to kind of uh, play director here. So uh, we're going to go Brain. It is Kevin De Bruyne. For Pace. It is Fernando Torres. We went with right foot. Cristiano Ronaldo. And then left foot. Messi. Lionel Messi. Yes, yes. I know maybe I don't I know maybe the uh Miami kit threw you off for a second, maybe. Yeah, it's a bit small. <laughs> no, it's cool. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, and then we moved on to skills. Now, this individual might have been a little bit of a, a, a throw or change up because uh that's uh Garincha. Oh, that's Garincha. Okay, yeah. 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 I know I, know I made it a little small. Uh, and then we went with... <laughs> we knew he was going to be in there somewhere. Yeah, we, we had to get him in there. there. So, Tiago Alcantara. Yeah, because I had KDB as the brain, so I ended up making him the... I had to, I had to find someone else for passing. So... Yes, Thiago gets in there, and then I had long shot. Xavi Alonso. I put header, header as. Pele. And then the finish. Of Ronaldo Fenomeno. Yes. R9. R9. For the free kick, we had. Andrea Pirlo. We had uh, then PK taker. Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Mm -hmm. Defending. That's Karim Benzema. Yes, yes. Then we put professionalism. Oh, Mr. Motivator himself, the Rabina kid. James Miller. <laughs> yeah. That's right. What with leadership? Stevie G. And then they went with celebrations. My whole right side was basically was basically reds there. <laughs> yeah, Bobby Firmino in for the celebrations. Yep. Can't say better than that. Then we went back into the lab here. We went back into the lab. And now we are moving on to – I had to double check. Uh, yes. We're moving on to your – into uh, the Irishman's um, perfect player. Yeah, built in the body of Ronaldo. Built into the body of Ronaldo. Yeah. You have the brain of Franz Beckenbauer. You have the pace of Adama Traore. You have the right foot, Diego Maradona. Left foot, Lionel Messi. Yep. Two Argentinians. Yeah, you had all two nice. Argentinians. Got the skill. Your... Got the skill, you know. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Two Argentinians for your right and left foot. And then... You went with skills. Oh, uh, Ronaldinho for the skills, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pretty straightforward. Nice. Passing is the underrated pass master, Juan Roman Raquelme. Yeah. What with long shot? Yeah, Stevie G, West Ham, every day of the week. <laughs> okay, okay. Header. Miroslav Stefan's already going with you so far. I guess, I guess maybe he's not a Balotelli fan. <laughs> yeah, I got clo closer on headers. Miroslav Klose, the German striker, for anyone who doesn't remember. And <laughs> finishing is Marco Van Basten, one of the greatest yep. strikers of all time. Yes, Retired was... cruelly early, done by 27 with the knee, but if you wanted someone to finish back in the day. Yep. And then, right. uh, then we free went kicks. with um, free kick. That is Juninho Pernambucano, 
the Leon and Brazil legend, one of the greatest free kick takers of all time. Yeah. Put knuckle balls from 35 yards. Unstoppable. And then he went to defending. Now, I'm going to make this caveat, too. Like, uh, the defending wasn't, like, obviously people would have been like, oh, why didn't you go BVD or why didn't you go as a defender? You know, we had to pick a actual um, outfielder or a, yeah. a attacking outfielder as our defender or as so the defender. That defensive you work rate. Right. Right. Defensive work rate. So for that, for me, Wayne Rooney was the most obvious choice. He'd work all day. He'd defend all day. Just never stopped running. Perfect. Perfect for that defensive work. And then after that, you had. For penalties, Andrea Pirlo from 12 yes. yards. Yeah. Happy. Very happy with him. Happy with that one? Yeah. Okay. Um, the professionalism or, then, uh, Sir Stanley Matthews, the man played yeah. till he was 50 years old. He was a vegan and a teetotaler in the 1960s. Almost never injured. Played football for 27 years, at least at the highest level. That's professionalism. It is, yeah. Leadership. Despite oh, you him. done Roy up badly there. You could have shown me one from his playing days. No, I, I wasn't going to do Roy. I was. Gonna... <laughs> <laughs> that was a good fun, man. Fun Roy. <laughs> Roy, man, come on. You play for no Forest. Way. You play for. Put him in an Ireland kit. He yeah, looks good. Like, he looks like Odin or something like there. He looks like you know. So, anyway, he looks yeah, like a leader. But... He looks, he looks like a leader. He looks yeah. like a leader right there. Yeah, so he's in for leadership for me. And then <laughs> celebrations. I can't remember who I picked. Oh, yeah, I picked Tino Aspria. Backflips for days. Mm -hmm. What more do you want? There you go. There you go. And then um, and then we went back into the lab once again. This is yours, JK. Dr. Uh, JK. Dr. JK Dr. came in and, and brought in... The, the body of Mo Salah. And then oh, my God, an eight pack. Yeah, I know. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> and you came in then, you, you put in the brain of Lothar Mateus. You took out Mo's mm -hmm. brain and popped in the brain of Mateus. Mm -hmm. The right foot of Steven Gerrard was attached then. No, no, no. Oh, okay. Go on. That's, that's it, yeah. You had right foot, yeah. Stevie J. Yeah, no. Uh, you didn't inject the pace. We switched it at the end. Who'd you put in? I put I, in uh, right foot R9. Um, oh, well, I have it at Stevie G still. I'm sorry. Okay. I'll, I'll put right. it, I'll, I'll, I'll try to make the, I'll try to make the corrections then because I know that, um, I'm looking at my spreadsheet here too. I have it still at Stevie G. Yeah, because I switched him at R9. But mm -hmm. okay, but go ahead. We'll, we'll we'll make we'll make it better. We'll go. We'll yeah. bring it back. So go the ahead. pace, the pace of Kylian Mbappe, injected mm -hmm. in there. Yep. Le yeah. On, on goes the left foot of uh, Lionel Messi. Yeah, mm -hmm. possibly the. I think the the consensus, pretty much the consensus, other than the chat, had left foot being uh, Messi. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so now for got, skills. Yeah, Diego Maradona. Diego Armando mm -hmm. Maradona. El Diego. Uh, whoops, my fault. Whoops, my bad, my bad. There we go. And then? Passing of Andreas Iniesta. The long shot of Luis Suarez. <laughs> I forgot. I, I, I know, I know. He's hmm. got a menacing look in that, in that picture. <laughs> and then uh, Header. Rude Hooded on headers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the finishing of Ian Rush. Golly. Oh, his finishing was as uh, neat as that moustache. Then Beckham on free kicks. And then... mm -hmm. Bobby Firmino putting in the defensive work. And then we had... Lua, Robert Lewandowski on penalties. Good choice there. Uh, Kenny Dalglish for professionalism. Mm -hmm. can't, can't really 
can't really go wrong there. The man himself. Leadership, Virgil van Dyke. Mm-hmm. No, no surprise there. Born leader, born winner. Is that, oh, Daniel Sturridge on celebrations. Daniel. Daniel Sturridge on celebrations. Yeah. Yeah. With the wig that's of the arms. Everyone too, remembers the, way, the wig so of the I arms, mean, right? Yeah, that's I, him celebrating. I think, I think Daniel was born celebrating. Celebrating. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he come out yeah. dancing, man. <laughs> he did. He yeah. did. Uh, very good pundit as well, actually. Very good pundit. Oh, actually, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's doing a good job. Yeah, he's cool. Would, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think he's doing a good job. Um, so chat. Is it chat? Now we have the chat. This is the chat, chat, guys. This is the chat. The body of Adi Akin Fenwa. I don't know if that's the best <laughs> advertisement for <laughs> Adi there. But, what um, the hell, man? Uh, hey, that's the, the one I the man, it, That's what came up. <laughs> the legend. The living yeah, legend man. that is Adi, Adi, Adi Akin Fenwa. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, wow. what 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 a uh, what a specimen! <laughs> so in in goes in goes the brain of Javi. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're going left to right now. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. In in the the pace of Nunes. Mm-hmm. Okay, imagine imagine him with pace. Oh my god. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that body coming at you with the pace of Darwin Nunez? <laughs> Jesus, oh my! God. That would That'd be, be crazy. Let's give up and go. Home. Um, and <laughs> the right foot of Ronaldo, phenomenal. The real, the only Ronaldo. The left foot of Maradona. And then they went. The skills of Ronaldinho, man, those skills, you know. Same as myself there. The passing of Iniesta. Mm-hmm. The long the, shot. Oh, yeah. The long shot of Stephen Gerrard. I was sorry. Uh, yeah, the long shot of Stephen Gerrard. Yep, yeah, that's the same as um, you. I no, me. Picked, no, me. Yeah, no, you, me. I, I took Stevie that, that long shots. I have Stevie yeah. on long shots, yeah. I picked, uh, I picked Zabi on long shots. And then... The heading ability of Sammy Hippie, like what a, I mean, when he connected with one, it stayed connected with. If yeah, you know yeah. Like, I'm surprised. I'm surprised they went with that too. Big um, Sammy. Big Sammy Hippie. Yeah. Went to Leverkusen. Don't forget, he went to Leverkusen after he left us. So, yeah. you know, there's, there's always been, um, there's been a link there for a while. He went there and he played two seasons, and I think he won player of the season. Uh, everyone thought he was finished. He was like 37. He went to Leverkusen, player of the season at 37. Just unbelievable, absolutely unbelievable player. Let him go too early, probably. Possibly, possibly. And then let's see here. Yeah. Sure, oh, who's, who's putting it in the onion bag? Suarez, Suarez on finishing. Okay. Um. Then they went, yeah, with someone. I think I may have given the game away on that one. James Ward Prowse on the free kicks. Yep. Excellent choice. Yep. And then the penalty taking of or defending, Carlos Tevez. The defending, was, defending. The defending. Oh, sorry. Pen, oh, defending course. Carlos Tevez. Yeah, that makes more sense. Yep. yep. And, then, and then they went with Mario, I believe, on penalties. That yep. is for Mario. Yep. In his uh, more Arzut days, as they say, a bit more yep. mop on top yeah. there. And yeah, Milner for professionalism again, Milner for professionalism. That is the leadership of Paolo Maldini, you know, yep. what player record, uh, record everything at Milan. And yet, Danny and Danny's going to be doing a lot of dancing. You know, a lot he's, of got dancing. A lot of, he's got a lot of dancing to do, really. So, you know, I'm glad he's up for it. You know, I'm glad he's yeah. going to be happy to do that because he's going to have to. <laughs> he's going to need two buses. He's going to be hopping from one bus to the other and then dancing on the other bus, on the chat bus from JK's bus. Wiggle the arms across the road and everything. <laughs> exactly. Um, okay, so there's, there's the presentations on basically um, 
That's who, who we got. That's who we got as our players, as our perfect forward. And I remember, this is only for forward. I know Stefan was asking some questions like, um, you know, we're, uh, we're looking for the free kicks because Brian's choice is the benchmark. Statistically, most free kicks, free kick goals of all time. Janino, Pele, Ronaldinho, in that order. Yeah. Mm, no. Um, That's what he said. No. But anyway, yeah, that would be okay. correct. Um, I think I, cause I think James Ward Price is up there. Yeah, you see, we, we we couldn't go. Yeah. I was going to go with Latisse's fan, and then I just I had him in my team, and I took him out because I remembered it's Latisse. I'd for, I'd forgotten about all that crap he was going on. What he, like I used to love him when I was a kid. Now he mm. he really hates Liverpool. He said some really nasty stuff about Liverpool in the last few years. Mm. So I'm. You don't really, want that hate. You don't want that yeah, hate in the body yeah. of, of your perfect player. Yeah, like unbelievable technique and. Um, like we said the other night, like he used to score wonder goals every other week. Unbelievable. It's kind of um, the reason why I, I went with I didn't I didn't even though Suarez is an amazing player, I, I chose to I chose to not include him and replace him with R9. I didn't want that hate inside my player. But it's good. It's all good. Um Stefano was saying he looked it up. He says that's that's what the numbers are for free kicks. Yeah, you see, Pele's numbers aren't reliable. Um, basically, a lot of Pele's numbers aren't. They're not. Reli they're not reliable. Basically, mm. without getting too deep, too deep into it. And mm. um, there's someone else that has more, I'm sure, than that. Mm. Um, but yeah, look, I, I, yeah, no, I'm sure Stefano's right. I'm probably forgetting. I just think someone else is up there. I forget. Um, mm. But yeah, what were we saying? Yeah, gold versus farmers. <laughs> I'm yeah. saying, I'm saying that both. I'm saying that one. I mean, we have a pretty good, we have a pretty good team. Uh, if we had a like, if we were trying to play this in a, um, would we play? Would we play these players? We'd have to probably sit one of the players, obviously, because we're not going to go with four. Four prop. Most likely, you're not going to go with four up front, like. Um, so let's say if we were to put these guys up front and we were to do the three, put a front three, let's say, or front two, that'd be easier. We'll do a front two. Four, we'll do a four, four, two, right? So we had to put these two players. What, which, which two players are you putting in the front front lineup? What, 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 what two forwards are you putting in the left and the right? You'd have to ask the people, man. You'd have to yeah, ask the I know. I'm asking the people. That's what I'm asking. That's yeah. the question. I, I'm not I mean, I, I'm somewhere. sure the chat. I mean, the chat might be partial and say say their own player. Who knows? But I mean, like, there are some really good players out there, man. There are some really good players. Really good players. Um, I don't know if people know who. Um, uh, I was going to even. I was for for my skills player. I was going to go with Neymar too. I, I almost went with Neymar. Because Neymar is mm. amazing. His skills skill sets are incredible. Like what he does, what do he you can think do. With he the ball. wasted. Do you reckon he wasted his career, Neymar? I do. I don't know if you could say he's wasted his career, considering no. he went to no. his Not years in years. Barcelona. I mean, by him going to Barcelona was like the best thing he could have ever done yeah. in his career. Yeah, I don't think even. He, wait, I think going to PSG didn't a good move. really work out for him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But while he was at Barcelona, he's won. He's won plenty. He's won like that MSN. You know that that doesn't get talked about at all because yeah. people mm -hmm. a lot of people don't like Neymar. You know, I don't really have anything against him. He's an unbelievable player. Yeah. He does. You know, he messes around. You know, I, I get why people don't like him. But if you actually watch how good a footballer he is, and just put the bias mm -hmm. to one side for a sec, he's unbelievable. That kid. Well, he he was uh -huh. when he went to Dubai and did his uh, his knee. But mm -hmm. like that MSN, that's Messi, Suarez, Neymar, one of the greatest front threes Mental. of all time. That was yeah, unstoppable. Yeah. That was uh -huh. just like that was the year I think Suarez scored like fifty nine goals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think he, he was the best player in the world that, that oh, season as well. He was. He outscored. He, was, I think, uh, yeah, yeah. he, he scored that season. Even everything that um, Messi has done, 
and Ronaldo did. Suarez that season outscored both of them in terms of rate uh, at a rate of scoring rate, like goals mm-hmm. per minute. They've never they ne- either neither of them ever did what Suarez did that year. Mm-hmm. Unbelievable, man! Um, that, yeah, best player I've ever seen uh, with my own eyes, man. I've seen that, like I've seen him get, at games against like uh, Cardiff City. The guy's in first gear and he scored two or three goals, or was it two goals? Yeah, and uh, just like the way he used to play football, he was like a proper street sort of footballer. You street know? footballer, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's a street footballer. Yeah, top player, absolutely. top player. Yeah, I, um, Stefano is saying, um, which was, was it was just kind of surprising. It's just surprising, no matches for Zidane anywhere. True. True. But I'm going to tell you something quickly, guys. I never connected to Zidane or Ronaldinho. Them two players, for some reason, I never, like, never connected with them. I don't know why. It was just them two, Zidane and Ronaldinho. Um, I don't know why. It's weird. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. No, I was going to say, maybe we should have gone, maybe... Maybe we maybe we could have gone with Zidane for a header. <laughs> maybe <laughs> he's definitely good at using his head. You know, what a way! Saying, be, what be a way to go! Yeah. yeah. Be careful of the quiet was, ones. Yeah, yeah. You wouldn't expect it from him because he's like a quiet type of guy, and then all of a sudden he pop, he does that. He was like, "Well, what's going on here?" He's from Marseille, man. He's from Marseille. You don't mess with those boys. You he's brought, he's you brought up on the family. streets. Yeah, you know, it, it, those boys, immigrant, he's African immigrant, he's Algerian. Yeah, he would have grown up, he would have grown up in some tough places. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, you yeah, talk yeah. shit to him, eventually you're going to get sparked out. Like, And he <laughs> went for, he went for Matarazzi. He didn't go for, like, he went for the the biggest, and I know it was him who was doing it up, you know, Marco Matarazzi, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, it was him that, but like he, uh, he didn't care. Like to do that in that game, Jesus man, absolute um, insanity. That was as insane as um, Cantona going into the crowd for me. It's oh, just because yeah, he did yeah, it to yeah. another player because it was his last ever, like ever game. It was. That's it was. the end of your career, right there. You literally your your okay. career is red card walking off a pitch. That career to end like that. Yeah, it's dropping the mic. <laughs> one yeah, more it's player, one, one player or another, I guess you could say. Them two were similar though. Zidane, uh, Zidane and um, who are you saying? Zidane and uh, Zidane and who? Neymar? No, no, the guy <laughs> you just said a minute ago, Brian. Mm. Mad- who? No, no, the other guy, um, Zidane and Cantona. Yeah, my mind just oh, Cantona. Oh, yeah, of course, mm. yeah, yeah Cantona. very similar personalities, very quiet type, but don't mess with them. <laughs> how about how about this player, by the way? He's asked, uh, Luca is asking, um, if you think that he was uh, decent with uh, for headers, he was a nifty little striker, Paulan. I think he was pretty good. Yeah. He was, he, he, used he to was, score headers. I thought it's good. I know he was good, yeah. Yeah, but you're not beating Mirza closer, so. <laughs> That's certainly true. That's certainly true. Five headers in the World Cup. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, you I, know. Uh, mm-hmm. Clay, I read something about Closer yesterday that he was saying that um, the modern-day footballers have got no respect. Like, he's old school, you know. He was like, the kid, he was like after training, he'll clean up, clear up the boots, the balls. And do that sort of work, you know. And like mm-hmm. these new guys, yeah. the youth players, they, they don't do nothing like that. And he was like really like peed off about it, like the attitude of the youth, youth, uh, youth players nowadays. Totally different mm-hmm. to the old school guys, you know. Hundred mm-hmm. percent, man. They have everything. Well, I know the younger kids. That's still part of the ritual, is you know they they do have to do that. Kind of, but once you get to the the senior level, yeah, people carrying your your bags, everything. Yeah, it's like I mean, this 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 question by Stefano says most memorable World Cup moments in your memory for him, uh, for some reason, is uh, Roberto Baggio bossing it in 1990. 
Um, I mean, I'm, I'm bringing up this question primarily because it could have been, for some, it could be that sedan moment that we just spoke of. You know, I mean, that was influential in in being a uh, you know deciding moment in that in that uh, World Cup. Um, mm -hmm. I also was going to say maybe, <clears throat> excuse me, um, the beatdown Brazil gave to Germany. I think it was right. Didn't they? They beat down Germany. No, Germany did them. You seven mean Brazil? Nil, seven one? Or, yes, or it was a beat down that Brazil got from Germany. Yes, right? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. They got destroyed. Yes, yeah, yeah. In Brazil, in, in um, Brazil. In Brazil. Oh yeah, that was yeah, that was crazy. That was yeah. I'd say for yeah. me, like, there's the obvious ones that would be because when Ireland got to the World Cup in Italia ninety, mm -hmm. you know, I was still only around ten when that was happening. So mm -hmm. that was one of the biggest. Italia ninety is one of the biggest cultural events here in the last. 40 50 years when it combines cult cultural and sporting events mm -hmm. um there's two moments in that like obviously david o'leary scoring the penalty to put us through to the quarter final against romania that's the whole country literally exploded when that penalty went mm -hmm. in just insanity <clears throat> you, you like it was like you could go out on the streets there was no cars there was nobody out nobody driving literally it was like COVID. Remember, like mm -hmm. it was like COVID. Back. Every <laughs> everybody was inside watching the match. Nobody was yeah, out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. But as, apart from that, like the non-Ireland stuff, mm -hmm. I yeah, I probably yeah, I'd go with um, yeah, the Roger Mia one. That for me. Mm -hmm. I, I have a, I have one that actually does that sit game. more vividly in my mind, but it's not. But. I'll, I'll allow yeah, for you guys no. to go first. Yeah, no, it's just it's mainly the Irish stuff. So then the other things are just fun, like because. Um, but yeah, that, it's anything from Ita basically anything from Italian ninety really. Mm -hmm. That was yeah, Italian ninety was big. Yeah, that was just such cool. <laughs> like for just for Irish fans, mm -hmm. that was that tour was amazing. So pretty much anything from that. I was I was gonna say um, the one that that really really sticks in my mind is the. Randy uh, Chastain, it's Women's World Cup, obviously, but um, that that one stands in my mind a lot because when she, it was one, it was it was for for America, so yes, it's U.S. U.S. Women's National Team, but it's like you know very symbolic the fact that she took her kid off and she was like standing there in her sports bra, like and is waving the kit, you know that became like such an that came like a pretty iconic moment for uh for women's women's soccer especially did she win but, the world cup did she win the women's world cup she won it was on a it was on a penalty kick oh cool. oh yeah all well, right okay so you won it with oh nice mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, maradona had the gold yeah i, yeah. I think and the I mean, it was maradona. Like, yeah. yeah it was like yeah. one of those things where she won on a penalty kick and then like you know like she takes off her takes off her kit, she's waving it, and she gets, like, engulfed by, like, you know, by, like, um the team and everything, because that was, like, the final, the final kick. She had to, she had to make it to win it. And she did. It's pretty, pretty, pretty symbolic. JK um, is going hand to God. Yeah, hand to God. Yeah, you know what? I, I, that is an iconic moment. It is certainly an iconic moment. Um, I don't really remember it properly. I, remember like, I mean, goal, like, the goal is more iconic to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know that the goal. goal yeah, mm -hmm. that's yeah. That I mean, probably the best goal ever scored. Yeah, maybe that because because it, it was in a World Cup, you know. And we never yeah. seen that before, you know. The world's never yeah. seen a guy do that. That's what it was, you know. The and way he, he did it. the ball, crazy. Doing it for Argentina against England, like don't forget the the, the Falklands oh, war. Yeah, yeah. Wasn't that you know? Wasn't that uh, old then? Like they were still had recently been out, literally been at war with each other. Mm -hmm. So to do yeah. it, it on the world stage against the English team, yeah, that, that's iconic. That's about as iconic as it gets. And then to you do it, that, yeah, yeah. that's a career in one game, isn't it, J.K.? Mm hmm. The hand of God exactly. cheating moment, and then one of the score and one of the greatest goals you will ever see in the same game. Yeah. That is just Maradona in it. That's Maradona, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but I reckon I think, the, uh, the World Cup. Question was about Alexi Lawless. Alexi Lawless is 1994. It was the he played for the U.S. men's national team in '94. He played in the one that we played when the World Cup was here in America. Actually, he was rocking the the long red beard, kind of looking looking a little bit like almost like ZZ Top. <laughs> yeah, the uh, the Diana Ross World Cup. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The only miss worse. The only miss worse than Baggio's is Diana Ross's. In the start, you all remember that, right? Do you not remember that? No. No. Diana, Diana I remember. Ross. I remember Baggio's miss. I mean, that when yeah. you talk about defining moments, defining moments in a person's career that don't necessarily shouldn't define their careers. I yeah. know. I remember no, Baggio. They had the opening yeah. ceremony, and Diana Ross was singing, and as she was out on the pitch. And as part of like the whole act that they were going to do, like they as just as she was finishing, like they kind of wheeled on this massive, big, inflatable goal, and there was a ball, you know, near the penalty sh- spot, and she was obviously had been you know rehearsing this, and she was just going to run up and kick the ball into this massive open goal, like, and it was time. So as soon as it went in, the goal would kind of collapse, and some fireworks would go off. And she ran up and she just like took the worst. I know it's Diana Ross. I'm not expecting Ivan Tony, right? But like, I know, but she's just the you, worst. He's like, top bin from Diana Ross or something. Yeah, yeah. Like, she could have just, <laughs> but is she the way she managed to miss it? She just yeah. rolled it past the post, but it was like, but because it was all set up, they still had to exit. They still exploded the goal to make it collapse. Like, it had gone in. It's just the funniest thing, man. You Google it. I see it on YouTube. Yeah. Well, it's because she runs up with a microphone in her hand in like a white kind of a pantsuit kind of thing with high heels on and tries to kick this ball. And it's just, just, oh, it's the, yeah. It was whoever, like, whoever came up with that idea should have been sacked. It's like, don't ask Diana Ross to try and stick one in from 12 yards with a mic and one hand. Come on. She's Diana Ross. Yeah. Yeah. So we we so we did never we never really got um we never really got an answer too by the way for my original question and mm-hmm. who would get into this who who would we pick as our first two forwards um and then also I'll ask this question too from honesty he says question can Neymar be called a legend because yes he won a treble but he had the goat and Suarez when when he, when we went to PSG to be the main guy, couldn't do it, and now, um, now Boar is thirty. Oh, now Man is thirty one in in Saudi Arabia. I think well, he's that's a legend. A, that's just saying he only he was only good because he played with Messi and Suarez. No man, ask them how good he was. Yeah, exactly. Like he wasn't a passenger. So, oh, he only like he had to score the goals. No one put the ball in the net for him. I like, get it. You're playing with two mm-hmm. top players, but maybe their games were elevated by playing with him. Maybe that's why. Yeah. Maybe he was like that. Was they were all a part of that? He's just he's well, someone that people I don't. Say, like. I guess I, so they put uh-huh, him down. Yeah. People some yeah. people don't like Neymar, so they yeah. refuse to really give him any kind of credit for anything. Yeah, really. That's, yeah, that's I was going to say I this. I was going to say easy answer this for this. Brian for me was no man, and I will repeat this: no man wears the number ten kit for Brazil that isn't a legend. They they don't they don't give you that kit. They just don't unless unless you are the man, you don't wear that kit. He was been told at the age of fifteen he was the next Pele, and he, the hopes of Brazil yeah. were on his shoulders. At the age of fifteen, he was been told that. Yeah, and he's, he's and the fact is... that he's had a career like that. That kills all those new Maradonas and new Pele's. They mm-hmm. get chewed up and spat out, you know, because they can't handle the pressure or they weren't that good in the first place. Neymar to go on and do what he did score. I think he's record goal scorer. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, I mean, it, he's just one of those guys that, for all his talent, it's because because he didn't become an incredible, amazing player. It's like, oh, he was a failure. He wasn't this. But he maybe yeah, he's him. Look, his antics. He doesn't help himself. But he also um, is the most foul player in Europe. 
over it. Like that guy yeah. gets kicked all or was when he was here. Yeah, yeah, he dives. Yeah, he makes the most of it. But he also gets to live in SHIT kicked out of him sometimes. So. Yeah. Look, if we had the opportunity to bring uh, a talent like Neymar to Liverpool, I, I would, I would, I would bite your hand off or chop your hand off before he could even take take the offer back. You know, yeah. Albert like said. Would- the, the, yeah. A lot of the stuff was the Mardi Gras stuff and going back to Brazil for his sister's birthday and all of that. So a lot of that. And I'm not there, you know. I, I don't know. I think, like, Messi loved playing with him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I think I just that feel, you're right about that. Yeah. I just feel I, that with the talent that guy had and he was called the next Palais at 15, I was just expecting more from him. I think mm-hmm. when he left Barcelona, he went downhill from there. Um, whoever his agent was then telling him to go to uh, PSG did the wrong thing there, you know. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't know, man. If I got the opportunity, I think sometimes people look at it from like the perspective, and we all do. I, and I'm not saying that we don't. I just saying I think sometimes people look at it from the perspective of, oh well, football terms on a football mindset. Yes, you want to go to a team that's going to bring you glory, silverware, and everything else. Sometimes, hey, look, let's just get it, let's not get it twisted. Sometimes people are looking to make their make their lives or their family lives better, you know, by just, you know, securing the bag, basically. And uh, mm-hmm. you know, and sometimes also, I mean, but Barcelona. They put down two twenty for them. Yeah. They put down two hundred and twenty million like Yeah. Barcelona are gonna be like, uh, yeah, would you yeah, you should take that one. You know, yeah. yeah, I just think of it as like Paris isn't exactly, a, uh, you know, like a terrible city in any means of the word. So, I mean, like, yeah, he has the opportunity to, you know, he seems like a person that what is getting an opportunity to see the world. A lot of like a lot of people that um, a lot of these players that have these opportunities aren't coming from sometimes the best places in the world, you know. And yet, you know, here they are being able to go to these cities that they possibly couldn't even pick out on a map, much less, you know, other than know the name of it. And uh, and it's it's an incredible opportunity. I, I just think that if you had the opportunity, yeah, most likely you would you would on for what his character is. I think Paris kind of suited him to be able to go there. Like he would, I would, I could have seen him going to like Paris or like maybe even like. Rome or something like that, or you know, or Milan, or you know, like these cities where like there's a lot to do. The city's vibrant, and uh, you well, know, wherever kind of pay him eight hundred grand a week, yeah, it can match someone getting paid his kind of yeah, his kind if, of money. yeah. Like it was the club was the wrong club, but yeah, they were the wrong. The, the project was was not a good project. I think the project was handled wrong, personally. you know. But mm-hmm. I kind of admire him to kind of say that he wanted to go out on his own away from Messi and uh, to win a Ballon d'Or by you know uh, winning it with, with, with Paris and they came close to got to a final got beaten by Bayern Munich mm-hmm. uh, 1-0 I think and I think that was admirable in a way of course he got mm-hmm. well paid for it of course he became mega rich from it but again I, I just don't get the hate for him I really don't mm-hmm. get the hate for Neymar at all it's just like this, um, like the the whole next Pele thing. It's mm. imagine mm. someone saying that about you when you're 15, and then someone going, and then five years later, a load of people turn around going, "You were supposed to be next Pele. What's wrong with you?" It's like I never yeah. said it. Like who? I mean, some newspaper called me the next fucking Pele. I didn't yeah. come out like Jose Mourinho in a, in a press conference and go, "Give me that number 10 shirt because I'm here, lads. I'm the next Pele." No, it's just. This is there's nearly two hundred million people in Brazil. <clears throat> there, it's a footballer is, is a religion there. It's not not in a trifling way. It is a religion there, and mm-hmm. they put these people up on these pedestals, mm-hmm. and they tell them you're the future and you're the hope of this country. That pressure would kill some people, let alone ruin their careers. It would send sure. some lads off the rails by being told you are the next Pele. You're the next. You're going to win World Cups for Brazil. So, but I'm just a footballer. I'm one kid. Like tell them that when he's fifteen. And then a load of people who, I'm sorry, couldn't pass the ball 10 yards on a five-a-side pitch. Oh, laugh. Oh, he was supposed to be next Pele. He's, he's failed. 
he's not that good. He's this, he's that. You try and live with that pressure, that stuff. We spoke about this before. You talk about fo- footballers being dehumanized act, mm-hmm. and people just acting like, oh, he's this, he should be that. 15 years old, these, and it's, it's happening all the time to these young kids in Brazil. Hendrick now, mm-hmm. 16 years old, going to Brazil, you know, for our go to Real Madrid for 60 million quid. He's going to be the next this, he's going to be next that. He's 16, man. He can't even drink, he can't even drive. Yeah. Wow. Like, yeah. I couldn't take that pressure when I, I would not have been able to withstand even a tenth of that kind of pressure if I was yeah. a young kid playing sports. It's just not right. Like, so yeah. the whole next would you this, swap? Would you swap? My, um, like let's say not would you swap, but let's just say um, if you swap, and this is uh, Stefano's question, and then I'll bring up Nigel's questions because that's for you, Brian, too. Um, okay. Would you would you swap Mane for if you swapped Mane for Neymar in oh, Klopp's Jesus. error? Do we win more trophies? Do we win more trophies, less trophies, or the same amount? JK. <laughs> I like that. I, well, I just answered the last one. I've just been talking. Know, no, I've just been talking for half. Hard. I would say with the way Klopp plays, Neymar would be too lazy for him. Mm. Uh, Mane was a workhorse, up, down, up, down, up, down. Um, But, nah, I I don't think so. I'm I'm, I'm doing some thought on this one. And, of course, my my natural instinct is to say no. Uh, Mane wouldn't win us... Mane would Neymar wouldn't win us more. Um, but I'm also thinking about the fact that one Neymar doesn't have the work rate nor the you know defensive work rate that Mane has, not even close. Um, however, being my argument that I use for Diaz and everything else, you know, my the train of thinking that I use for 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 Diaz. Again, Dave Diaz has a has a, a much more intense w- work rate than, than Neymar. But what I'm going to say is that the ability to have a player, an undeniable player, that can one finish and two can create can off of, uh, with, with his ball control. That could have been the difference in a lot of those those years when we got stuck against those low block teams. And couldn't create or produce something. Uh-huh. And most likely, if you had a Neymar, we're probably getting penalties or probably getting at least some type of like amazing, you know, acts of brilliance. Not saying Monty doesn't give give those two, but I'm just saying Neymar, I believe, does have a higher propensity to to create those kinds of moments. Um, yeah, I'm a tech merchant. I am a tech merchant. Um, like I might lean towards Neymar, it's not, as 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 sacrilegious as that might sound. I I might lean to Neymar. Only I just think that if it was vice, if it was if Neymar played on the right, different story. But I'm just looking at also that we got that workforce of a midfield behind them that can kind of cover um, some of Neymar's defensive deficiencies, and then we especially have a better left back being Rabo there to kind of hold down that left side um more so than if he was you know obviously trent on that side it was trent maybe different story you know but being it's Robbo and being that we had that we'd have you know Ginny or someone like that on on the left um i i would go i would go with that i would go with neymar i'd go with neymar well instinctively you say that it wouldn't work because Mm-hmm. basically it shouldn't it probably wouldn't you know Neymar being asked to do clop things in the clop team it mm-hmm. just yeah it, it doesn't sound right it doesn't you know really sound like something that would work but mm-hmm. if the question is Neymar instead of Mane so I'm going to work on the assumption that Mane or that Neymar is in the team and he's happy to be in the team and Klopp is happy to have him in the team right mm-hmm. so if he's playing 
So that's the only way I could look at it. And if that was made to work, then I would say, yeah, I think prime like Neymar at his best in in a team that he's happy to be in. Yeah, he wouldn't do the work, but if it was working, so if it's just a simple kind of question, so hypothetically he was in the team and they were both playing and it did work, I would definitely go with him over Mane. But I don't in the real world, I don't think yeah. I don't think it would be a marriage made in heaven, Klopp and Neymar, but we would win at least, least as much. Mm-hmm. We would win it as, as least as much if it was Neymar in, and he was happy to be in, in the team. But yeah, I don't think they'd have, they like. Who was, who was, Bar- who was his coach? Who was, um, who was Neymar's coach when he was at Barcelona? In the MSN. Mm-hmm. In the in the prime of his years in Bar- at Barcelona, who was who was the, um, the coach oh, for them? Crap. That's when they went through that period where they had Villanova, they had Kike Setien, and they had like yeah. after Guardiola, they had like three or four random. They had Villanova to go. I think the guy sadly passed away since the Kike Setien. Then they had. Someone, someone will have to look up because I'm shit with dates. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm asking that what, too. Cause cause like, what, the, what year does Suarez? What year does Suarez leave? That was what 2012. Was it 2012, 13 when Suarez left? Um, I'll tell you. Give you, give you a story about a coach. All right, uh, I'll give it. And I'll, I'll give it to you. Or where and what it was then. 2014. Um, his uh, his best years, years were probably under uh, Luis Enrique. Enrique. He's had 140. He's had 145 appearances with 90 goals, 18 assists. Uh, or or no, it's ninety goals. Yes, it's ninety goals. Ninety goals. Sixty-eight assists. Excuse me. Let's see, ninety um, goals. Sixty-eight assists. Come on. That's that's pretty impressive. <laughs> that's pretty impressive. In one hundred and forty-five games. Um, yes. That's I mean, that's, that's over um, a goal contribution every game. That's more than yeah, a that's, goal contribution every yeah, single goal, uh, goal game. assists. Again, goal assists. Yeah. Goal yeah. assists. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yep. Um. Um, even when he played under um, Romalho, um, he had 42 goals and 22 assists in 68 under games. Um, M U R I C Y R A M A L H O. Um, I'll tell you, who that is. yeah, yeah. I have to pull uh oh you know what that's like that's when he was in brazil that's why you might not know who that is. oh okay right right okay and what the hell is this guy um, that's, um that's for uh yeah 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 he actually he actually coached the team that if i was going to buy a team he, it would be the that would be the team actually sao paulo um let's see whether what a good year uh under uh thomas tuchel he had 67 appearances. Times. Yeah, Tommy two times. He had 67 appearances. He had 51 goals, 32 assists. I mean, that's pretty impressive. Good fellas. Mm-hmm. Who else did he? Yeah, see, I'm keeping really it. Really I'm on brand tonight, you know. <laughs> that's the bit when he went, he was uh, introducing everyone to him. Hey, that's Tommy two times. Yeah. He said everything twice. <laughs> I'm going to go times. get the papers, get the papers. The papers, that's it. That's yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so I mean, I'm only asking that because I asked the question and then I'll bring up. Um, he, was, he was a real guy, too. Jacob. He was a real guy. He was like, you know, he was famous for actually like having run like almost extras in some of those movies that were real mobsters. Mm-hmm. The guy mm-hmm. that goes, I'm mm-hmm. gonna go get the papers, get the papers. He was mm-hmm. actually a real, he's a real, real mobster. yeah, he, yeah, 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 that guy. He's probably yeah. someone that they went to to ask questions or like kind of get you know the story yeah. from. They're kind of like you know what you could probably be in this movie. 
Oh, it's a great it's line. Cool. It's a great line. It's for if you only imagine that being like I was in a movie once. Oh, really? Yeah. And then it's like, yeah, I was that guy. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, cool. Okay, mm-hmm. cool. And that's the moment that in the film as well. Yeah, go ahead. Real quick, before we move on to this next question. Um, Neymar, Barcelona, 186, uh, 186 starts, I think this is. Appearances, excuse me. 186 okay. appearances, 105 goals, 76 assists for Barcelona. That's nearly, a, uh, that's nearly a one GA in every appearance that he's made on average. And then, and then uh, at Paris or in at PSG, he had 173 appearances, 118 goals, and 77 mm-hmm. assists. Mm-hmm. So, um, I'm telling Santos, you. Yeah. Big numbers, man. It's big, big numbers. Big, big numbers. And don't forget, and don't forget any of these farmers, the quotes out there, this in this includes Champions League. They were yes, all in. They were always amazing. in. Every, all, yeah. all the two teams I just mentioned were both always in Champions League. And then Santos is his team that he played with in um, Brazil. He had 72 goals, 35 assists, and 140 as appearances. Child. As, a as, a, as a kid. As a child. Not even yeah. a kid. Yeah, 15, 16, 17. Right. And I know so that people are saying, no, he it. hasn't. I know people can say what they want to say about his, you know, Saudi career, but he's only played five five games. Oh, he's done his, his knee, knee badly. Yeah, real yeah. Bad. Before doing his knee injury, he, he had five games. So I mean, like, I don't know if that's really like a real sample size to say, oh yeah, you know, he was crap in that league, or he was this, or he was that. I understand people no, might not. I, like I wouldn't that count league. it anyway. I wouldn't count it but anyway. I would, no. But for me, Neymar was all about the Neymar was all about the papers. The papers. He just cared about getting rich, and uh, I think when you get tagged at a young age, you are going to be sorted for life for money. Um, no matter where he went, he was always going to get paid well. You know, that's what mm-hmm. another reason why agents nowadays are hyping their players, the youth players, so mm-hmm. they know later on mm-hmm. they'll get big moves. They'll get more mm-hmm. money. There's always something involved in it. Yeah, but look at the numbers. What was this? Uh, the this, boy is was this is Brian. This is for uh, you, Brian. Question, um, Brian. Off topic as usual. Sorry. Have you snagged a Europa League final ticket yet? No, I have not, Nigel. And it's highly unlikely that I will be going to that game. Um, yeah. I'm just unfortunately at the moment I'm not in a position to make plans like that. Yeah, uh, expenditure. Well, just yeah, and w- with family scenario, I kind of need. I'm, mm-hmm. um, uh, yeah, just the way I'm at the moment. Where, uh, the idea, yeah, I wouldn't be able to. I'll be off somewhere for two days, you know, on the beer or whatever. It'd take a lot of planning. So I'd be as well, and in my kind of circle and my, but like I'm really the only Liverpool fan, football fan kind of thing. So it's not like I wouldn't be going with a bunch of mates or anything. I'd be going up on my own, meeting people and stuff. So it wouldn't be, yeah. I might, if I can, because my sister has a house up in Dublin that they that, that uh, is unoccupied most of the time. So I might go up there for the week. It is assuming, again, look, assuming we, we get it. But uh, all being well, I will definitely be up there for that weekend and I'll be in the city because I reckon there'll be there'll be a lot more than just the game going on that weekend it'll be a great yeah. weekend just to be in the city yeah. going to the bars and, and, and going around that'll be the game is only a couple of hours in the evening I think that the week that weekend might be pretty legendary mm-hmm. if mm-hmm. if we get there because it's um it's somewhere that people will Dublin is the kind of place that people will um spend an extra night if you know what i mean they'll stay mm-hmm. there you know for an extra day on the beer you know if mm-hmm. they might book you know if if they win you know let's stay in dublin for the weekend and probably go on the beer so uh temple bar that evening again again assuming we get there 
assuming mm-hmm. we get there. Assuming we get there. Assuming we get there. Well, I appreciate that noise. That sound. That yeah, really sounds. That's, Thanks, yeah. Nigel. I'll keep that in mind. Um, there was also another quick question, and then we're going to get in since we're getting into these good fellow quotes. Um, there was not a question. Oh, but is just your, quickly to you boys, your, quickly to you boys. Mm-hmm. Do you, do you actually have a kind of in your head a little bit that we are? are do you have it like almost kind of in your head when we get to that final? Mm, I mean, look, to be a I'm not going. I'm not going to around. say that. I, I I have it in our in my head that we're going to be in that final. I can visualize it as us being in that final, but I'm not going to discount the fact that it's not. It's not as easy as a lot of our, especially our rivals and our new, and some neutrals have assumed that it should it should be. There's some good teams that are still that could still cause any team problems in the in Europa, in my opinion. So I mean, there's some there's some teams yeah. out there that can really you know make you have to you know figure out the the best lineup you can. There's no like oh we can rest players on this day type. Um, competitions uh, against any of these against any of the opposition that's ahead of us in any of the rounds that we'd have to take to get there. I, I personally, I know that people want to see the uh, Bayern Leverkusen. I know people have said that. I know some people want to see the um, well, lineup. They, they, or, they did. They I'm wanna, not sure if they do now. Yeah, yeah. They I all mean, wanted to see our next manager a bit, didn't they? I think that was right. Kind of that was. That was and I, I I never really understood that either because I mean like he would be breaking someone's hearts he'd be breaking yeah. our hearts or or Leverkusen's hearts you know one or the other so like um, I just looked at it as like you know I rather see uh, Leverkusen take on West Ham and us find us end up with like West Ham or something like that in the mm-hmm. finals originally before all the the um, before all the the brackets and, and the um, competition mm-hmm. or the Opponents got figured out. I don't even know if we can face West Ham any longer. No, we can. It's open draw. Yeah. It's open draw. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah. Atalanta won three 0 away to Napoli today as well. But what what so, do you think, JK? Because I think there's a few Liverpool hmm. fans that I'm like I'm not I'm like there's hotels there's hotels booked. are booked in Dublin already. Yeah, yeah. And to it's me, not just yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, it's not just Dublin either. Like uh-huh. the surrounding counties, like Ireland is small. You can get a hotel in in a different county, and it's only forty five minutes to Dublin. And I know for a fact yeah. is Liverpool fans are booking hotels because I'm in that that trade. I know a lot of people in hotels, managers, head chefs. They're like, oh yeah, they booked up, like not booked up, but yeah, there's people living in Liverpool because obviously they know from the credit cards that yeah, yeah there's twenty booked in for that weekend mm-hmm. already. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like the Man United game, bro. I think we went too confident in that game, the FA Cup one. Uh, I never met one Liverpool fan who said we were going to lose that, or it could be a tricky tie or something. Everyone said 4 0, 4 1. And so, um, because of that, I'm not going too overconfident with that. Uh, we're going to be in the final. I just let yeah. it come how it is, you know. I think we'll reach the final, I believe. But I'm not going to be mm-hmm. overconfident like uh, the Man United game for sure. Well, the no, bookies I mean, are never far. Off. They always go up. The, the even though, even though you would think, oh well, like you know, this team is a better team than this team, or whatever the case might be. I think sometimes like the the level of the game or the or the the importance of the game can sometimes like level out. You know the. Um, the performance, like I, I, I know I spoke of about the the Brazil game against Germany, where they got absolutely, you know, destroyed at home, you know, in in a in a, an important World Cup game, obviously. Um, but it's one of those things that sometimes the the settings can either can can somewhat level out the the game, like as in, oh, this team should just run through this team, or, you know, like as in that that year that we played Spurs, we should have beaten them by more than we beat beat them by, beat them by, personally, you know? I just think that we were definitely that that much better of a team that year. But yet, you know, it still ended up being a, a, 
at, at points, some at some at, or if you ask a Spurs fan, which I actually had to deal with last night, um, yeah, it can be it can be it, it can be the case where they they're still butthurt about that about Oki, that is final. He, is Oki a Spurs fan? Is he? No, 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 no. This is someone else. This is someone else. Yeah. Okay. Oh. No, no, that's not. It's not open pool. Um, if it was that, if that was the case, uh, we would probably wouldn't have. Wouldn't I was trying to keep it on the down low with Oki, and you're going name dropping there. I mean, pick, uh, no, up, it's yeah, cool. pick it up off the floor. Pick it up off the floor. You we already said floor. it. We already said it. We already. Said it. <laughs> that's why we already said it last time. So that's why. I, I really. I mean, I, I think he's a great, 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 great musician. That's why I don't mind saying his name out. out. But um, no, they but, are yeah. Spurs fans. Don't Spurs fans are really sick about that final still oh my gosh, are yeah. they ever are they ever? if harry That's kane cool. had been fish oh that was yeah. a handball yeah first, it, the handball is the first thing then if harry kane had been fit then like yeah but what about the fact that he just literally didn't turn up yeah. like the rest of your the rest of your, your crew didn't turn up it was an easy game it was a really really easy game it was a boring game. It was it was so uncompetitive. It was boring. Mm -hmm. It was. So I, I don't it know. Was. What I don't know what they're sick about because they only themselves to blame. It was because they ended up like not really like it did. It, that's what I mean. Like sometimes you don't play your game. You kind of sometimes in situations like that, you know, it's a final. So rather than just go out there and play your game, you're like, oh, just don't go out there and don't mess up. You know, so you just like play a little yeah. bit more conservative. You don't play, you play more of a defensive measures and such and such. And that ends up being a boring game. You know, like I've seen a bunch of games where we've had great competition and it hasn't been necessarily that, that the teams just go out there and play. They seem to like kind of stay within their shell and that kind of makes it makes for me, that makes the final kind of boring stage. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, let's get into what it was about this topic here. I know that like um, we have some we have some players that are going to be possibly leaving. Okay, so um, I'm going to say Bash three packs. players here. Three players here. Um, what was it? It's like the buy was buy bench sell. Wait, buy, sell. What's the three ones? The three, the three that they go with. I'm now I'm just lost in training my train of thought. Sorry, because it's like bench. It's either it's start, bench, drop, is normally what you would do, right? So, um, we'll do resign for bags start. packed. What is it? Bags packed. Bags packed. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we'll say bags packed. To the left. Um, yeah, as Beyonce uh, said, and, uh, to the left, to the left, to the left. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> hey Tiago, to the left, <laughs> to the left, to the left. To the left. We have three yeah. players. We have Tiago, we have Matip, and we have Adrian. Which one of those three players? This is for the. This is for the chat, and this is for. And I'll and then I'll ask the panel individually too. So put your answers in the chat, and I'm going to ask the panel, and I'll, I'll I'll give my own answer too. But you have to resign one player. You have to um, bench. How are we going to put it no, down? There's only two, man. There's only two ways of doing there's this. There's only two you options. There's you got to either resign them or, or let them go. Or let them go. It's to the left, to the right. Okay. Yeah. To the right, that's into the office to sign a new contract. To the left, Beyonce style. Okay. Yeah. Does that How work? That, like? that yeah. works for me because they're either signing or they're going. There's no in between, unfortunately. There's no in between. Well, what's the in between? Um, we leave them sit in the car park. Yeah, what do we do? I mean, they're either yeah, signing or they're either staying or they're going. So there is the one. Right there the is left. one out there. Maybe the chat can even help us. There is one out there where you go buy, you go buy, sell, or something else. Oh, okay. No, I, oh, know. Start I know. Sell. I know. It's start buy, buy, drop, sell. That's the ones. So you can either. You could try to sell a player, buy a player, or re-sign re a player, sell a player, sell them. They or, have no or let them go. No, I know they have no value to you, but so I you mean, can't right? sell. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. 
that have no value. Yeah. So we can't sell them. They're either going on That's a free or they're staying. I, I don't want to crowbar something in, you know. Oh, I mean, all right. Okay. Okay. We gotta be. We gotta be realistic. I think to the left, to the right. That's because there ain't no in between. That's probably right. another song. Sorry. So, so no for, for Beyonce's number one fan here is gonna be either to the left or to the right with these three players. To the right into, into the do? office to sign a new contract. To the right, to the left. We all know yeah. what that means. Yeah. Exactly. Or else yeah. just hang around in the lobby, maybe, and maybe someone yeah, will get hang, a job making sandwiches. You can hang in the know. middle, uh, you know. It'd be, it's just, yeah, because I mean, it, if it's one or the other, I know a lot of people are going to go, Hey, they're pretty much probably going to send a lot to the left here, but I mean, realistically, okay, one has it. to go to the right. If okay, let's make it more your way, okay, it's to the left or to the right, but one has to go to the right, okay. one of them has to go to the right. So for me, I'll start it off, Adrian to the right. Okay. Uh, one more year, third choice goalkeeper, absolutely fine. Uh, okay. The other two, Madap and Thiago, to the left. To the left, to the left. To the left. Okay. That's how it's got to be. Okay, JK. My thing is gone. My thing is gone, so I'm going to drop it and come back. Okay, sure, sure. JK. Yeah. What would you do? Um, what would you do? I, I, I understand what Brian's doing with the left and the right. It may if you had three choices and you had to pick mm -hmm. one for each choice, it makes it a little easier. Mm -hmm. But if we're gonna make it like as in the decider, um, we'll do it this way, and then we're gonna do it, do it my way too. Especially since Brian's mm -hmm. not here to regulate it here. Go ahead. <laughs> so uh, out of the three guys, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Well. Bit of a trick one. I have to let them all go, you know. Um, it's tough because of the wages and the ages and stuff, right? Adrian, um, I mean, they're all in their 30s, they're all in their 30s, they're all in their 30s, yeah. and I think yeah. my teeth's on about 120, Thiago's on about 160, 170, Adrian's on, must mm -hmm. be on about 80. That's so quite a lot mm -hmm. of money, you know. Um, mm -hmm. I think they're all. I think out of the three, my team's done the best for us. Out of them mm -hmm. three, yes, um, Tiago, a bit like the Neymar situation. We all knew he was a good player, but did he do enough at the club? Um, I think this mm -hmm. season would have been a good season for him if he stayed fit. Um, but I just feel that hip injury. Hip, hip injuries always take a year. I knew this when he had the operation. I said, like, "This guy ain't gonna come back for a long time." And like some fans were saying, yeah, he'll be back soon, this, that, and the other. And I was like, no, nah, he's going to be about a year. And he's, he's been actually more than a year now. So, mm -hmm. but wages wise, I think they should all three of them leave. Um, if I Adrian's still happy hear to stay still goal, uh, choice goalkeeper, you know, um, also Adrian didn't get a game when he was number two, uh, when uh, Alisson was injured. Klopp never ever okay. said, uh, Adrian, you can play that European game, you know, the one that we were leading 5 mm 1. -hmm. You could have played uh, uh, Adrian in that game. So for me, yeah. Adrian's not really there to play football. <laughs> he just gets his mate wages and yeah, and trains every day. Okay. Um, let's see. So that's none of them then. It's to let the, JK's ignoring all the rules and he's sending them all I, out the door. I'm going to yeah, yeah. We're going to we're going okay. to make him make a decision. Okay. So you're saying keep all of them or. Right? Sell or keep, keep he wants all to, of them. He wants to sell. He's, no, not sell. Release. There ain't no money coming in. Yeah, from release. These boys. Yeah, let them go. Yeah. Okay. All three. Like I had. Um, I, I heard someone say that to me today. Liverpool need to sell Thiago immediately. <laughs> it's like, dude. What window's open? <laughs> there's no window, and when the window opens, uh -huh. he's a free agent. The free agent, yeah. right? There, there right, ain't right. no selling anybody. Right. And like, oh yeah, but well, you know what I mean. It's like you know, he's like because oh, the same with matter, you know, get these guys out the door. It's like their contracts. We can't, like well, unless what say, you want to do? Say, can, cancel their contract well, for last three months. Let's say this is let's say this is November of twenty twenty three, right? Or mm -hmm. right? that was the year before this, right? So oh, November of twenty twenty three, um, these three guys are sitting in in the lobby there. You know, um, 
drinking drinking mate or drinking I don't know coffee or whichever or espresso whatever they like, and they're gonna have a a, a talk with the gaffer. And the gaffer's gotta choose. Hey, you know what? We can. It's still in a period where we could. Um, well, let's just say it's uh, let's just say it's August, August to make it easier. It's the summer. They they have a year left on their deals. Let's say there's still a year left on their deal. You know, uh, would you have, um, would you have signed? Would you have resigned this player? Would you have no. let this player go, or l- allow for him to leave on a free, or yeah. would you have, um, would you have uh, just said to um, resign? What did I say? Resign, drop, or because I it I wanted to make it where it's, there's three options. That's that's the primary. Mm-hmm. Like guys, you had to. Yeah, it's just almost like the the Mary. Was it? I, we Mary? know. Yeah, no. I get, I get to hold this, yeah. this, this, or that thing. But if the, if there isn't three viable, so what? The obvious one is. Just imagine there are. I know. Okay. Just okay. Imagine okay. There okay. Are. So just imagine the, the scenario that there are. There. Yeah, but the yeah. two that there are is we give them a new deal. Okay, that's right. an option. Right. We don't give them a new deal. That's an option. Right. So option mm-hmm. three is training on the training team. Coaching, maybe. Give me something yeah. that I can get behind. Give me an option. Give me something good. Give me something I can get behind. Like, like a Thiago, third option. Said he a should third stay. option. Give me a third option. Give you a third option. Okay. Go into coaching. Release <laughs> or have a barbecue with them. Well, that's the that's yeah. Well, that's yeah. That's the option. Vibes. Yeah, yeah. Vibes. You could you could either you can keep the player and allow for it to end on a free. You can just drop the player. Let's just say that you could just say you're just, you're just going to release them now, or you can resign the player. Those are three options. Okay, so ripping up their contract now and getting rid of them immediately yeah, just to saying, save you know, wages. I'll just, I'll just okay, eat. right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I can get behind that one. Okay, so to get behind his weight, say to pay him off, right? Yeah. Let's just say hypothetically, for from now to the end of the season, we owe Tiago. We will owe Tiago uh, two million in wages, right? Let's just right. say hypothetically. Right. So mm-hmm. we offer him a million to rip up his contract. Mm-hmm. Madup, it's the same. We owe him two million, a million to wrap up his contract. And Adrian, same, two million, a million to, to rip up your contract. Or mm-hmm. give him a new deal, or let them go on a free. Okay, right. so if I was going to do that, I would give Adrian a new deal. I would let. Uh, Matip go on free and I would rip up Tiago because he's on 200 grand a week so it would be the biggest thing right. okay. so okay, that's so the way I would experience. do it yes. I'd be keeping Adrian because because it's actually keep the guy Tiago makes 10.4 million a year makes a lot of money a lot of money he makes 10.4 yeah yeah 200 grand a week right 200 yep. 200 grand a week yeah that's an expensive med- all these medical bills that were you know it's He's that's a, he's an expense on the books, you know. So, if you said we could rip up something and and get rid of that uh, financial burden, mm-hmm. he would be that guy because I think they're all going. Well, no, I don't think Adrian is going. Party but, planner. Um, Adrian party know. planner. Yeah, he'd be party planner. Yeah. Yeah, but again, I don't want to go too deep into this. But the, the third goalkeeper role is actually quite important to have a top pro there. Someone that knows how to get involved, you know, knows what's involved behind the scenes. There's a lot more to it. So Adrian is fine. Just give him five grand a week and I'll let him stay for another year and yeah. tell tell the new manager, look, we have a solid pro third choice keeper in there. That's not something on your list. And then obviously Tiago's going. We all know he's going. You know, two hundred grand a week. Right. FSG, FSG will not like FSG don't want to like if you ask FSG to sign a player over twenty five, they're like really we'll give you you know this is your one special treat you know like he came out with endo he said we had to go outside you know to sign a player who's that old and tiago is 28 like we're not, we're not giving old players big contracts we're putting that money into into the kids so yep, yep. this is the last we're going to unfortunately the last probably we're never going to see tiago kick a ball for us again which is yeah. one of the most the saddest thing ever really what's happened with him it really is so sad because that's my answer to the guy earlier on who said who's our most disappointing the guy how rude i think it was nigel so who's mm-hmm. the most um mm-hmm. disappointing 
signing. signing oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Stefano uh, Asti. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think Thiago for me because of just how how much I loved the player that we were buying, how much I, the expectation I had for him. Mm-hmm. Not that he didn't live up to it, it's just injuries, but that to me has to be the biggest thing. Well, like some people were saying Aquilani, I just to me this the disappointment there was that we sold Alonso. Mm-hmm. You know, um, Cissé, I, I wasn't sure how good he was, you know, but this guy was like, we've just bought, who was it that said it? Someone at Man United, or someone ex-Man United player, ex-City player said, when when the news came out, we've, we've signed him, they were like, put your money on Liverpool to win the next two league titles. Mm. That's how good this guy is. They've just That's like that, that Klopp team. You know, that Brexit the midfield, yeah. yeah. And they just added a Thiago to it. Forget yeah. it. He said, it's done for the rest of the league now. Yeah. That's, that's That was the level of, not expectation, but just hope that came with him. So he, yeah. he has to be the biggest disappointment. This is a shame. Oh, shame. man. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Okay, Thiago, you still you still got in on my, uh, on my Frankenstein. So, all right. And then... Uh, JK, what was what would be your uh your mixture on that? And again, in the chat, mm-hmm. please do tell me what would be your mixture of the question, the final question that I asked there, which is you have to um you can either you can re-sign a player, you can rip up a contract, or you can allow for a player to leave on a free. Mm-hmm. Well, for me, the worst signing, I'll quickly get that one in, is uh, Kiate. Cost 65 million, probably paid in 30 million in wages. So you're talking nearly 100 million there. So for me, he's the worst ever, probably Liverpool signing of all time. I'm, I missed that. Sorry. Um, who, who did you say? Sorry. Kiate. Kate. Oh, Kata. 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 I always think Kata. Oh, okay. Right. This Kata guy who paid 60 million. Yeah. He got injured in his first game. Um, yeah, okay. yeah, but that yeah, guy, yeah. I think he cost a lot of money. Uh, he was sort of hyped up as well. Because oh, the fans were going on. No, Nabi was a disappointment. He was disappointed. He that's why he, he got as, on our list. On our list, he was the Joker, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, he was. Well, he, was. he was the Joker in a sense, or the jester, however you want to put it, like guys. And because, look, you know, he's a player that we went in for. We had to wait a year, even though we we acquired the the, the um, you know, even though we made the, the deal, we still had okay, to wait yeah. for him a, a whole another year. And we finally do get him, and he ends up, you know, not being able to. Um, Meet the rigors of, of the Premier League, mm-hmm. but yeah. But uh, the three guys, I would keep Adrian mm-hmm. b- because of, he's a third choice goalie. He's not going to play. He'll be on low wages. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Thiago, not on low wages, but yeah. But I get you. No, Thiago's wages is the. Um, no, no, I meant I meant when you said Adrian. Adrian does make a good. Does make these. He does make a good work. Yeah, yeah. He makes. I, think I he mean, less than seventy. Um, and I, again, I'm not gonna go as you know as be as petty as to say, oh, you know, all these guys make great wages. We would all like to make 15k a week, but I mean, uh, you know, or 10k a week or something like that. But what I meant by that is that he's still making seventy. I think he makes seventy thousand. Mm-hmm. Seventy. He either makes Crazy. sixty or seventy thousand dollars. Sixty or seventy thousand pounds. Excuse me, a week, which is still pretty exceptional. For his age and what position he is and what he does, he mm-hmm. just keeps himself fit and gets paid for it. But that's okay. Right. <laughs> but um, Thiago, I would let go, and uh, Matip also. So okay, yeah, yeah, and I get it. Matip and Thiago can't be relied on, and Kwanzaa rises. Kwanzaa's rise makes that an easier, um, easier move. I agree, with Stefano. I mean, mm-hmm. like, look, you know. The way none, I don't think, not many people had Kwanzaa being this on such a being such a uh, being someone that contributes as much as he does. I don't think anyone really saw him really going into this role or into this position that he's become like an actual um, that he's become an actual presence. The presence that he has become, I don't think anyone's really said or seen that coming. But you guys hear me. Yes, we can hear you. We can hear you. Yeah, I couldn't yes. hear JK there for eight. My everything dropped out there. Sorry. Oh yeah, it's it's better that you didn't hear JK there. No. <laughs> so, what, what what did you go? So you kept just joking, you, JK. Just joking. I, I kept, you kept Adrian. Adrian. Yeah. Yeah. And then I released both of Matip and Thiago. Yeah. He doesn't play by the rules, does he? 
JK does not play okay, by the I'm rules. Okay, I'm going to keep yet. one then. Okay, I'll, I'll switch it up. You're only keeping him till the end of the season, by the way. That's all. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You can rip up a contract. You can immediately, immediately, up, immediately, just rip it up. You can pay him you off at fifty percent. Pay him off at fifty percent. Yeah, you all make right. an arrangement and say, "Look, we get it. You have an injury, mm -hmm. but he's gone tomorrow." Yeah, like, you know, ra you know, uh -huh. rather than have to like, you know, figure out pay, trying to wait for you to get whack. back from the injury, we'll just we'll we'll make a settlement payment for you. Basically, That's or, my and team, then, then. Like, okay, cool, right? That's my team. Yep. So my my tips your is your settlement payment. Yeah, yeah. Um, your resign is Adrian. Adrian. Okay, Adrian. Yeah. And then uh, and then you're just letting Thiago go. You're gonna just yeah, let Thiago him go. go. Okay, interesting. But I believe Thiago would be a good coach one day. I think he's got. He's a very good football brain. He's in his. He's going oh, for yeah. his. Uh, he's getting his coaching. Um. I think he's getting his, or not? I think I, I read somewhere that he was getting his, um, his uh, actual his, uh, his coaching credentials right now. Actually, as we there's speak. a there's a guy that goes. He's on uh, one of the channels a lot, and uh, it's one of the Irish channels. He goes on there a lot, and he lives in Liverpool, mm -hmm. and his um, his kids play with Thiago's kids. Like play oh, really? football with them, and yeah, no, they like. I mean, play cool. like that's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah, like youths, you know. They and he's like, um, he's always there. He's all like, he's always just there. He's just stand, like, he's just standing around watching. That's like, cool. To, oh yeah, no, he like if you knew the crack, like you, it's just do you want to go meet Tiago because he's over there, like, yeah, you know, he's there watching his kids every week. He would he'd be there, and he was saying. um He's already doing like that kind of stuff. That kind of thing. yeah, yeah, that kind of, that, that kind of coaching. Yeah, 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 you can see. Yeah, yeah, he's he's the kind of guy that <clears throat> excuse me, sorry, he would immediately run over, you know, and be and, and kind of stop the kid and go, no, no, look, look, do it like this, do it like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, he's saying like, but he's like, oh yeah, it's like, um, oh yeah, every Wednesday or Thursday, you know, just turn out there he is. And so like, it kind of got to the every every time he come in. Um, people are like, oh, you know, well, that's because he wasn't like on every week, every night or something. People, oh, well, that's going bad. Like, oh, well, so how's Tiago? I uh, seen him the other night. He's great. He won't be, you know, say hello to him or whatever. But yeah, it's great to see like that. He just goes out. He's no airs and graces about him. Like you know, just goes out, watches the kids, just like all the other parents. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I'm just about to respond to. Uh... I'm about to respond. I think when Matt uh, Stefano says Matt from Coppers met Thiago, said he's a proper dude. Didn't didn't after he meet Thiago, I think he got injured right after. Oh, uh, the hex. The hex. The Coppers <laughs> hex. <laughs> Man, like Matt, I'm just playing with you, brother. Just kidding. Just playing with you. Um, All the same. Uh, I uh, If we were going to resign someone, um drum roll drum roll i would resign my tip my tip i would um hmm. i would i would rip up adrian's contract and i would let thiago leave on a free that would be my three well, there we so, go there we go there we go. Two, so two, one, two one to Adrian. So he yeah. gets to Adrian gets, gets, to, the gets this. Adrian was getting re-signed by both of you. I mean, you know, it's basically it's the cheapest. Right? Yeah, it's most I, I irrelevant. Get, it's yeah, most irrelevant. That. We need and the, the other thing guys. is, he's getting one fit out then three. Yeah. Well, we have to sign all. We have to sign one of them. I ain't signing the other two. Of them. So. I don't know why. So my question then, um, before like guess we're gonna make uh make this a, an easy flight here. Um I don't get why people want I don't get why people don't see the I'm gonna say importance, but like uh the the value in possibly extending Matip for one more for one more year. 
like as in what that kind of symbolizes, what that what that just kind of the character that it shows for the club and everything. I don't. I don't think they look like that. The FSC don't care about looking good by giving someone a contract they deserve. Well, that, but, not, I mean, Klopp but it's not for me that's saying he doesn't. One well, thing is that Klopp would have. Exactly, that's probably one of the reasons he's gone. Yeah. Probably one of the reasons. Like, I'm not saying <clears throat> I do this, I do that. I'm saying FSG ain't giving this guy a contract. Right. FSG ain't giving Tiago a new contract. Right. FSG I mean, the guy that would have probably Mata stood up for, for Matip in the room would have oh, been gone. I think yeah, he's been gone. Yeah. yeah. Now that he's gone, gone, it does make a difference. But, That's I mean, like, it's one of those packed. things where, like, if – Klopp tries to stay and with his what he said earlier about oh well the the I'm gonna the team's gonna do right by Matip that kind of concept you know and if he tries to make it make that as something as one of his like before he leaves as something that he tries to make sure happen I don't know yeah, if they, look, I don't know if that's the case but I'm just putting it out there like that football is far too ruthless. At our level, for for any kind of charity or kind of goodwill or anything like that, when a player's contract is up, like we've seen it, like when everything is good and nice in the garden and rosy in the garden, mm-hmm. it's fine. But when the shit hits the fan, you see, um, going back to like Bill Shankly was was asked to stay away from the club. <laughs> you know, he was asked not to come around anymore. Basically, right. you know, don't come around here no more. I say, you know, it's 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 song titles tonight. You know, don't, don't come around here no more. You're not welcome right. anymore. Yeah, it's the likes of Madip. Look, mm-hmm. at, it's we were speaking last night that I'm. I've heard, I read a little bit more about it today, but I was amazed that we've ended up in a scenario where Trent has one year left on his deal. Virgil has one year left on his deal. Now, Mo is a different scenario, but especially Trent to have a player. And clubs are all about book value mm-hmm. on their assets, and two years under contract well, is then the minimum how about they want. That, then? But this, no, but let, just let me fi- but let me finish. Yeah, quick, yeah. Just let me finish. Yeah, so yeah. what I'm I'm saying is, when you have a player like Matip, and there's not two years left, not one year left, but mm-hmm. two months left, mm-hmm. it's not like there's some contract waiting or going to be happening for a what 32 year old guy who's missed a lot of time from injury unfortunately we're, we're just not going to sign you up maybe you would have had a champion with Klopp but that money those wages can be better spent on a 24 year old kid 25 year old player that's the way it will be looked at from the club's point of view so mm-hmm. it will be thanks for your service and and off they go but don't expect to me it's like this is what, yeah, this trend thing where he has a year left is massive alarm bells, you know. So for a club, mm-hmm. a player was, is going to be happy. That's why they released that little sob story about him wanting to sign for Liverpool. Mm-hmm. Of course he wants to sign for Liverpool. It's like, oh, Matip would like, would, Matip would be very interested in signing a new. Of course he would be. <laughs> too fucking right he would be because, oh, right now, he only has intra- interest from in Eintracht Frankfurt. It's like, well, yeah, that's what's going to happen when you're a 32 year old with not the world's greatest injury record coming off a big deal. That's just what's going to happen. So, this, the trend thing is the one I'm, is the contract that, that I want to talk about or think about, really. Maybe even the Van Dyke one, but the trend well, then- one. You can only you can only you can What's resign on, yeah. you can resign a player to a extension. You have to let you have to let a player um, ride out or leave on a free. And I know that you can't. Let's just pretend it's January because I know you can't you can't let him go now. Um, but let's just pretend this is the January window, and you have to possibly. Uh, transfer a player. I okay, know that five like, million for him. Okay, we can get a hypothetical yeah. five million quick yes. for this guy. Okay, yeah. okay. Out of the three, three, uh, those three players in Salah, Trent, um, was it Salah, Trent, and Virgil um, van Dijk? And Virgil, maybe that's the year left, right? So, Salah, Trent, and DVD. What order are you putting those three in? Well, I'm 
Uh, well, Trent has to be number one priority. Probably, probably most like most, most likely. It has to be number I, one priority. I, I liked I liked how if you do put it like not just five million. Let's just say you you get whatever their market value is. Oh, I thought we were rephrasing one yeah. of the previous guys. I didn't realize what we're doing for these. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. so I meant like and says that way, like you can possibly like you you might you might likely get the most market value possibly from Trent. You might, you know, or maybe maybe you might see it as Salah. I don't know how um, it matters what the market value is for it, but I'd say you would get more for Salah because you would be able to sell him to a Saudi club, mm -hmm. but Trent would be worth more. But Trent won't mm -hmm. go to a Saudi club. Mm -hmm. But for me, so the one, so we have to keep. What are we doing? We're re-signing a guy. We're, mm -hmm. we're selling a guy, mm -hmm. and we're letting a guy go on free. Is it? Mm -hmm. Oh Jesus! Out of those three, out of those three, right? Okay, I take. I'll give Jake. I JK the last one. So I'll. Yeah, you got to go first yeah, this time. Right. Okay. Well, I. Obviously, I'd be re-signing Trent. I think that's an easy one because he's 25. Mm -hmm. I would then sell Salah because he would have the highest market value, market value. Of, okay. of, with a player with six months left. Mm -hmm. Just because of what I said there before. Which would mean, yeah, I'd, I'd end up having to leave Virgil go on a free then, which uh, not ideal now. But yeah. again, you he's think, thirty. You know how crazy that sounds. That well, you, you if you've like, made, yeah, you, well, look, I know. You, I'm just saying. I'm, I'm not question. saying. I'm yeah. not, I know. I know you didn't have a choice, but it's just crazy. Because <laughs> like, I mean, well, it could always happen. It could always happen. Well, do you want to let you know? It's either I don't know what JK is, but if if it's like, I mean, any of these players, any one of these but three it's players, just the way say, you know what? I don't like the coach. Just, or, hey, you, just, you know what? If this, I can just, said, like you said before, Salah could say, um, "I this is my this is my window of being to being being able to lead this club, you know, without any like real fire um, against me by saying, okay, Klopp's leaving, I'll leave with him. That kind of not necessarily to yeah. go with him, but like I'll I'll leave as well." So, no, it's just the, the way I looked at it. There was, you know, we're, we're, we're I know it is hypothetical, but still, um, I'd be keeping the, the, the player with six, seven years left at the top, yeah, as opposed yeah. to the the Virgil who say is, is what 32 now, you know, at the, so if right. he has to be the one that leaves, and then Salah will be the one. But you never you know, know I man. You could be, be signing a player five years, and then I know, no. But you forced me to. I, I'm trying to put some context behind my decision. Right? Why okay. I made, okay. picked from the tree I have, I can't extrapolate it because then I wouldn't be able to pick anyone. So, right, right. Salah would be the one that I'd sell because he would probably be the most valuable, mm -hmm. right? So you'd get mm -hmm. the money from him. I'd be mm -hmm. keeping Trent because he's 25, and then right. Virgil would be the one who asked it. Finished out okay. with an, an logical elite. decisions. Logical, yeah, I understand. I thought so. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think Jake, JK, you ready uh -huh. for your for your uh turn turn at bat here? He's selling uh -huh. more. JK's gonna yeah. sell more. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm all right up at FSG's uh, role model there. Um, now nah, for me, I would um, sell Salah. Resign okay. Trent and let Virgil go on a free. Wow. That's perfect. I think with Salah, you're going to get a fee for him now. Mm -hmm. Trent's the youngest, and Virgil's 32 or 33. He'll be 34 mm -hmm. next year when his contract finishes. So I think mm -hmm. that's the best way to do that one. Okay. He is 32, isn't he? Is he 32? 32? I think he's 32. I think he's 32, yeah. 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 Uh, who, I think he's who you asking about Virgil? Years. Virgil van Dyke yeah. is 32. Yes. 32. Mo Salah is 31. Virgil's 32. Um, and they're probably the Diago's biggest guys 32. in the club. Mm -hmm. uh, Ali's 31. And Matt's yeah, Ali's two. older than. I look, it doesn't matter. He's a keeper. But I think Ali. Yeah, well, look, these injuries are starting to creep in a bit. I think Virgil, I'd be a lot happier saying this if he'd never met Jordan Pickford, but. Mm -hmm. He seems okay now. It seems to, mm -hmm. but again, you know, knock on wood, cross fingers, and all that. 
Well, it, the easy, obvious example is a Thiago Silva at Chelsea. Mm -hmm. Going there, still not this year, but last year, 38, 37, 38. Mm -hmm. Still top quality. I would say Virgil, I would be happy to say he's got at least two years. Do you see? You, you know, you at the top. Value? I mean, just at the top. I just mean right at the top. I may like Virgil could play for us until he was 35, 36. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, he could play for us till he's 40, for all we right. know. Right. But I, I mean, right. just sort of, I think, yeah. just conser conservatively, look at how good he is this year at this right. age. Right. I, I think he, I wouldn't be, you know, I, I wouldn't be kind of. Again, FSG might not look at it this way, but Virgil would be someone who I would be happy to give a three-year contract to. I'd have, I wouldn't be giving a five-year deal, mm -hmm. but I'd have no problem at all finding out we signed up Virgil till he will be 35, 36 years old. But mm -hmm. I don't see FSG doing that, you know, especially maybe him wanting a wage that would be commensurate with his role mm -hmm. in the team would be because mm -hmm. he wouldn't be signing up to drop down. A, a, I don't think, I think he would be signing up on similar terms maybe. Mm -hmm. Okay. So again, when you look at the, the FSG way of, you know, youth future planning, there's going to come a point where the number is too high for the age of the player. But I can see Virgil, if we were to let him go for some reason, mm -hmm. going and being a world-class defender for three or four more years. Mm -hmm. See, the, the, where, where or what uh, the question is like now, like starting to, to loom in the back of my head here is, I can, I can understand that Salah would eventually opt to go to Saudi Arabia. I understand the fact of like for the cultural reasons and and such, but yeah, yeah. I know that Salah does have a hunger and 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 a desire to win more more uh, silverware. It seems, and you're not going to do that in Saudi Arabia. That's so, true. That's another thing. No, you're buying on, man. This is some that, that is an assumption that people are making. He's happy to go to Saudi. Mm -hmm. I don't think he's finished. I don't think he's finished. With, I don't think he, he's, I don't think he's not finished. finished with his career. No. no, look at the way Salah attacks everything. Mm -hmm. he and the money, and it's goals. not the money. It's not the money that drives him like that. He I, at least that I, money I was he's making a lot of money, but yes, I don't think that. I don't think that at this moment of his of his life, the money is not necessarily the issue yeah. or the or the driving force behind it. You know. It's not like no, this is the, this is his first opportunity to get that big bag. He's making money already. Yeah, like, I think this is a bit of an assumption that's being made as well. And you're spot on that he's just going to Saudi. Yeah, I think he's looking at it going. No, man, I'm. I guess the reason why yeah. they've been they've yeah. been considering there's even been hints of the PSG talks. Yes, because... I was going to say it. PSG would make more sense to me. Yeah, he'd be sooner go to PSG than he would to go there, go to Saudi Arabia, and then. I was going to, I was going to ask though, I get that he's a scouser. I get that he, you know, um, he made the whole, this means more comment. I get that he understands, that he understands the culture and he understands this, the likes, but he also has a best friend playing in, in, in Spain. And he also has uh, one of his best friends playing in Spain. He also has like, you know, probably the stories being relayed back about like his, his, um, you know the pursuits and and the and the life that's going on with him and everything else, and maybe he wants to, like, it's one of those things of like, out of the three, it's a sharp I, turn. I could possibly see, I you could possibly see him saying, "Hey, you know what? Um, I've given my all here at Liverpool, and I want to go and test the waters of of Real Madrid." You know, or something like you know those lines. Wow. I just don't. Okay. I just I, why I'm bringing up that thing is though I don't see I don't see Virgil Van Dyke saying that. I can see out of well, all three is, of them, yeah. out of all well, three, I can see Virgil Van Dyke retiring at Liverpool before all. Out of, out of all three, I can see Virgil Van Dyke retiring at Liverpool. That's what I was saying. That's what I'm getting at. Well, if, I'm just, if I'm, I'm just if, very if you no, think this, different, this I'd is, like to hear. 
No, it's just interesting because this is it's, it's just like no, it's just I'm just interested that you've come to this conclusion now because what you know just recently what when you've spoken about Trent, you've always spoken about how no, no, yeah, you know you see him as like the the, the, the scouser, the, yeah, and, and all yeah. That. So no, I get that. Um, he's also 25. And I mean, I like, know, yeah, but you and I've never. You say, I don't like, know. If, the, I don't know if but I. Yeah, no, no. Here, what, 10, but I'm the guy that up. always. Yeah. But I'm the I'm the guy that will always say that that shit doesn't matter. Yeah. You know, like I've clashed with you before over like that's over sentimentally way of thinking things. Mm -hmm. Sure. You know, like oh, he's a scout, so he's going to do because. You know, it wouldn't. I don't like. The, yeah, Belling was over there, but again, I would like. He probably has a lot more best friends in Liverpool than he does in yeah, sure. in yes. Madrid. Yeah, yeah. But no player is immune to any kind of change of heart at any point. You know, because mm -hmm. I've always said, like I always say in football, never say like I was saying like the never other night. Never. There's right. probably only two nevers at the moment, which would be Jurgen Klopp will never manage Man United. And he is never going to manage Manchester City. Apart from that, everything else is on the table, I'd say. Mm -hmm. You know, you just cannot rule. And I've said this, so... And I'm glad that you... I don't want... Because I would have said this, and I was like, oh, I don't want to argue with you about this. But it's like, yeah, it can come to <laughs> a point. You know, a player can go, well, look, I've, I, I, I am a, yeah, a scouser, but there's a big whole wide world out there. Mm -hmm. I've won this and that, you know. You know what? Okay, the biggest club in the world want me. Maybe at tw at twenty four, he would have said, mm -hmm. "I want to I want to sign a seven year deal." Um, big up ops, the man, the Maybe. legend. But he was. I want to sign a seven year deal and never leave Liverpool again, right? Yeah. At twenty four, sure. you get to twenty six and you're like, well, actually, maybe. Maybe playing for Real Madrid wouldn't be that bad, you know. Maybe maybe I wouldn't mind, you know testing myself or doing something different and i'd never blame any player for that mm -hmm. and i would never say oh um i mean lads steven gerrard was 24 hours away from joining chelsea no you can, yeah you know no, it, I it's, mean, like, yeah it, it happens it happens so i'm with you like don't ever rule this stuff out because mm -hmm. if he feels like he's had and, and they all do that they get to a point like you know it's like when you're growing up you know you get to a point at some stage in your life where you realize, oh, actually, no, actually, time is there is time yeah. on me, and there's a clock yeah. on this. So he might actually, at some point, yeah. you know, like Klopp said at that point in that interview, in that planning meeting, as Trent could wake up one morning and go, Do you know what? Actually, I've only probably got about five years left at the top. I wouldn't mind playing for Real Madrid, or I wouldn't yeah, mind well, doing I something that's different. Some, something, something to offer. Just yeah. something a bit different, you know. I've, you know, I've given my all to, you know. So don't ever take it off the table, you know. Don't ever yeah. take it off the table. But th these rumors and stuff. It does. That's that's especially why these room with these rumors is why this, you know. Okay, well then maybe there is a possible possible like look, you know, <laughs> in the interview I heard. Uh, Gerard basically say like uh, he basically said that he, it was the best, despite the fact that he would have loved to, to have played for uh, Mourinho. Um, it was the better decision and that he's or one of the best decisions he made in his life, despite the fact that he didn't win any um, any uh, a, a league title at uh, at Liverpool, and um, he mentioned the, the sheer fact of like. You know, he could have gone on and done this or done that at another club. But it's somewhat of what you see with Torres, for instance, you know, like um, he went on, he went on to another club and he, he's gone, he's, you know, he's gone on to other, other things. But like, as in you can possibly, I mean, he's redeemed it somewhat in a lot of people's minds being Torres, but you can impact your legendary status by making a decision like that, you know, and especially on when you make it and, and how you make it, it all have impacts on it. But yeah, I just, yeah. it's just very uh, it's interesting. Th um, there's a lot more to th that, that whole thing. JK, I know as well, that what went on at the time, that was one of the, 
the strangest U-turns. Um, and Stefano was saying Steve McManaman did it. Mm. You know, that he went, and then he said, yeah, that certainly is impossible to spell. And, and like, played well, and played well at Real Madrid, too. Yeah, I no, I'd agree with Stefano that that surname is impossible to spell, but even still, that was a shit attempt. That was an awful attempt. That you, you Steve Mac, Mac, he just threw Manaman. a bunch. He just threw come a bunch. On, of, dude, yeah. Come on, dude. Come on. He just threw you a bunch of letters in there and just said, you know, yeah, yeah. you worked it out. You worked yeah, it yeah, out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's just come on. You got to do better. Than that. He's doing it again, Mac, 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 man, man. I mean, dude, seriously. Okay, right, right, right. <laughs> come on. But uh, yeah, look, never like I'm not saying he'll do it. I'm not saying he'll do it. Mm -hmm, but. Mm -hmm. You know, we'd never know what's going on, and these people are people. You know, they're humans. The the Gerard yeah. thing. He's it, it, the fact that he was that close just shows you how badly off we were at the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it really just shows you what a, a horrible position. Like that's just how bad this club was. That the one of our best ever players was. You know, let's not have it, Roman. His family, there was problems. There were death threats. There was hate mail. There was bad stuff happening. Effigies being burned. Stephen Gerrard shirts being burned on Merseyside. It got ugly. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. got really ugly. Mm -hmm. You know, so that was a really difficult thing. So for him to know that he was going to cause all that and still want to do it, it that was a really depressing moment. That was a real low moment. For the club, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, and that's why beating Chelsea in the finals recently sort of gives us a bit of joy after like letting uh, Torres go, them trying to upset Gerard while he was with us. So, beating them all the time for me is a good thing, <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 it definitely helps. It definitely, definitely helps. helps. And it's just, it's just some questions. I, I, I know that we have some, um upcoming decisions to make. I know that, um, as Brian put it, you know, teams, uh, especially, you know, the likelihoods of FSG and such tend to be more ruthless in their decisions or their, or in their, um, in their choices. Um, I know that we do have a situation where, you know, do we move on from, uh, the third, the third, Goal, goalkeeper. I mean, like you would think that it doesn't matter or anything like that, but technically, he's well, not he our third. Kelleher, he's not our third back. He's not our third goalkeeper. He's technically our backup keeper at the moment. It, yeah, you if know? we lose yeah. Kelleher in the same summer, <laughs> he's our backup. <laughs> you know, if we lose Kelleher in the summer as well, mm -hmm. yeah. You don't I don't even, know, I'm necessarily know yeah. if, I'm, if I'm like confident in us. Going in there with Ali and having Ali, uh, or excuse me, and having uh, Adrian as our backup uh, cool. goalkeeper. <laughs> no, I mean, so we've already probably got one new keeper to get. Yeah, yeah. Uh, unless one of these keepers gets, one of these uh, youth keepers gets, like, you know, it's promoted, Rajik or something. Yeah, we're like to lose him and Adrian. You know, you don't. Maybe it will happen. Look, maybe the new guy comes in. Go, yeah. Look, I've I've got this great guy to do this. Brilliant uh, third choice keeper, you know. But it's the lowest down the totem pole of priorities. Mm -hmm. If Adrian mm -hmm. is happy to stay on like twenty grand a week or something, yeah. But um, but I mean, I you, could use, you could say the same gone. thing to Matip. You could say, Can "Hey, I, Matip, no, I'm we could even make a hundred. Hundred thousand a week? No, 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 no. Yeah. I wouldn't. No, because we spoke like we spoke before. The third choice goal keeper thing is a highly specialized mm -hmm. position. I, I don't think like I don't understand. Like I, I really don't understand why we would give Matt up a new deal. I just don't under, understand his his contract's up. Mm -hmm. He's it, it's not really. It would be a purely sentimental decision to say, let's give this guy a new deal. I don't see any other way around it. But I think his wages will be put towards what are we talking about, actually? If him and Adrian. Mm -hmm. That's 160. And then Tiago, 170,000 a week. So then add, add 
Matip uh, makes Thiago. us. Matip makes a hundred thousand a week. Um, Thiago's on two. I can even tell you too. Like, um, see four hundred a week. Because there's an interesting. Let me see if I can bring this up for you. I I have a, a little chart here for you. Let me show you this. It's an interesting chart to have because it basically tells you. Okay, so um, on this chart, basically, it has. 2023, 2024, 2024, 2025, 25, 26, 26, 27, 27, 28. As the one to the next five years, and basically the current included, and it has what the percentage of the sal of the wages of the wage budget this that player takes up. So, for instance, this year, Mohamed Salah uh, takes up 13 percent of the wage wage bill. Next year. He gets a slight increase in his in his salary. He'll be taking up fifteen percent of. I think he gets a little bit of an increase, or no, that's not an increase. No, it's not an increase. It's more so because I think some people drop off. Yeah, some uh, there's a couple of people that drop off. So um, as it stands now, fifteen he, he would make fifteen percent, fifteen point three five percent, for instance. Okay, so. It is kind of crazy because uh, Thiago currently makes 7.49% of our wage bill is given to Thiago. Um, Trent That's makes 6.74. Yeah, McAllister makes 5.6. Ali makes 5.6. Ryan Gravenberg, which is surprising, makes 5.6. Um, Diego makes 5.24, so five and a quarter, we'll call it. Darwin makes five and a quarter. Um, and Dominic makes 4.5, let's call it. Cody makes 4.5. And then we come to Matip, who makes 3.75% of the wage bill is going to Matip. It doesn't get down to Adrian makes 2.25%. And so it's Adrian. Yes, so I said the three. So, yeah, so it's Adrian makes up 2.25%. Um, Matip makes 3.75%. And Diago makes seven point four nine percent. Pretty, pretty, pretty phenomenal that that, that is the case. Yeah, but look um, where Diaz is. Yeah, Diaz is way down there. Way we spoke down. About there. this, you know, I think we could almost have done. Well, it, it's it's more of a conversation than a show. But mm -hmm. what we were talking about, actually, my opinion that Luis Diaz is primed to leave this summer. Because yeah. of his, yeah. wages, his, because his age, wages and his contract yeah. situation, yeah, the fact that look. yeah, look at how yeah. look at how little he earns compared to so many other players. Absolutely, we have him locked in on a five-year contract. Mm -hmm. We are not going to double or triple his wages just because it would be a nice thing to do. Mm -hmm. You know, we might give him a new contract, but we're not going to offer him something like he could potentially get somewhere else especially since he's about to turn 27 mm -hmm. he's earning basically 25 grand a week he's on mm -hmm. 55 grand a week before tax which means he takes on 25 grand a week which for a player mm -hmm. like Luis Diaz if a club was to come in and offer him 200 grand a week after yeah. tax mm -hmm. and are you doing are, yeah. are you are you offering him um, quick question because we're gonna, we're gonna. The, I just heard the wheels touch down. Um, we had it on autopilot for a while, so we're gonna, uh, we are touching down on the tarmac here. But would you give Diaz a a a, a, um, a bump in salary? JK. Because his, his deal, his deal is not something where he's, as we spoke in, in the other previous episode, he's got four years left on his deal. Oh, so, that's why like, that's this is the thing, yeah. JK. This is the yeah, thing yeah. you see. He's locked mm -hmm. in. We have no, yep. we have no his need whatsoever. Being his agent, his dad's being his agent. He's thinking my son's going to be on that that much uh, a week for the next four he's years. 31 till he's 31. Yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. I think, his dad, think, think about it. And his dad is utilizing the circumstances. I mean, like, I don't think many people are going to push back against his dad. And this might sound a little, uh, maybe a little brash, but like, not many people are going to push back mm -hmm. considering his circumstances. Not many people are going to really call him to task. But I'm sure yeah. for other people out there, if you're if you had a dad or a mom 
out there really like continuously pushing and, 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 you know, lobbying almost for you in this way, most people will be like, shut the, shut the H up or, you know, shut the heck, shut the heck up or whatever, you know? Um, but because of his circumstances, I think he's getting a little bit of a free pass. So, yeah, sorry. but you have to also understand yeah. uh, when he sees maybe other players, look at Adrian, he's put, sort of getting similar sort of wages, yeah? Then mm-hmm. Diaz. So mm-hmm. he's going to think, mm, look at me, I'm giving my... Luca puts a lot of energy in his game. He's like, that Man City game, mm-hmm. that was worth a lot of money just for his energy he put into that game. So when you've got a guy like Adrian sitting on the bench just training all season and he's thinking, I'm getting the same sort of one guy as him, his dad's going to say, yeah. come on. Yeah, yeah, we've got to go. Yeah, we got to yeah. go. <laughs> his, his so I don't blame this him. Is, I don't blame him. That's on his is, what yeah. happened when we were talking to True the other night? The more we're thinking about it, the more we're talking about, okay, right. He's 27. He has one last big contract left in him, right? Yeah. At the age of 27 is when you're going to get a four year deal up to the age of 31. Mm-hmm. You know, because he's not Neymar. He's not Luis Suarez. He's not, you know, he's good, but he's mm-hmm. still, he's only Luis Diaz. He's not Vinny, Vinny Jr. You know, right. so he, he get a big right, contract. Right, right. He's not a get your point, Brian. We get your point. No, hey, no, hang on. Hey, <laughs> come on, dude. Come on. Context. <laughs> you, Context. I got you. Yeah. Okay. So, what I'm saying is, he, he's got a big deal left in him, but it's not going to come when he's 29. Right. You know, he's got to take it now. He, there'll be a, there will be some clubs out there willing to give him a four year deal, taking him up to the age of 31, mm-hmm. on big money. Mm-hmm. Liverpool have no uh, incentive whatsoever to take his 55k and triple it, which some other club will do. Mm-hmm. Now, maybe, like I'd say, yeah, give him a bump up to 100 grand or something, but there's, there's, a, there's a reason these things are happening because it's all clicked with them. His profile is probably about as high as it's going to be. If we win a league and he's involved in it, we do well in Europe, he's involved in it, his mm-hmm. stock is going to be as high as it's ever going to be. Mm-hmm. So he's going to be looking around. Like I said, I've only got four or five years left in my career at the very highest level to earn, to, to maximize my earning potential. Mm-hmm. Now, maybe some of these guys might be thinking there's a Saudi safety net mm-hmm. at the end of that. But Saudi, mm-hmm. that's four years time. Saudi might have changed their mind about it. Well, they won't. But, you know, even so, there's no guarantee. So the next four years, He's going to say, look, I can get 200K playing in Paris. Mm-hmm. I can get, you know, whatever it is from some other club. Even that might be pushing it a bit for him. But Barcelona or something like that. But why I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't begrudge him. I wouldn't say, yeah. no, you should you mm-hmm. should stay in. I would not begrudge him at all. If he says, look, you know, this is my last chance to get a four or five year deal on, on big money. Liverpool aren't going to give it to me. Yeah, look, I wouldn't begrudge the guy at all. And with, look at where he comes from. We speak, we spoke about that a lot when he was joining the club. This guy comes mm-hmm. from literally a village in the jungle. You know, to earn as much money as possible, as you know, in his career, is obviously a driving force. Not just some, not just all the rest of it. To this guy comes from poverty. You know, it, it's it's not something I would begrudge anyone to earn that kind of money for them. So I can just, I can so see it happening, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, Brian, here's a question for you. It's kind of like your quiz question. Yeah. So you know you? I was born in Fortaleza, six foot two. So for Sporting Porto, Galatasaray and Bolden. Fortaleza is in Spain, right? Mm-hmm. Or is it Portugal? Port- Where's Fortaleza? Port- is Fort- they- no, I was Port- born in Fortaleza. Galatasaray? Galatasaray? No, Port- no. Porto. no, he said, I was born in Fortaleza. Oh, Fortaleza. You know what? Fortaleza. Fortaleza. I, um, I want to say that's, I want to say that's Brazil. That's- that oh, it's is it Brazil? Mm. I thought it was Spain. It's mm. what the fuck is Fortaleza? So he's not too sport. Well, he's in Portugal. 
And from God's house right in the boat. Is that linear? I I think it's I think for I think that's in Brazil. It's Brazil. Oh, yep. Oh, for today's Brazil, in right? Brazil. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay, a Brazilian who played for both. I'm trying to think. Um hmm. a Brazilian to play for. I don't know why you picked this player, but I think it's the center half. Who is it? Who is you're going to go with? It's the center half, and I can't remember his fucking name. Like, I don't think it's a striker or a winger. I think it's a defender. Fortaleza. See, when I read that, I had it in Spain, and I just got Ivan Campos stuck in my head, and he, even though I know he didn't play for those clubs. Yeah. What was that Brazilian guy that played for? Can both on God. Or I hope I hope what this isn't a blind alley and he was born in Fort Lazy, but he actually plays for Italy or something. I mean those Jadal. are some yeah. Jadal what, or something? What's his From name? Oh I know the guy. I know it. Hang on. I know I know it. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, is it Jardim? Jardal, yeah, yeah. Something like that. Mario. So, how, do you, how do you spell it? This is the person I was. This is the person Jay, I think it is. Jardel, Jardel, Jardel. Mm -hmm. Yes, Jardel. Mm -hmm. Jardel. I yeah, yeah, knew, yes. Yeah. Jardel. Uh -huh. Yeah, I was. I went with Jardim. Yeah, I, Jardel. That's the guy. Jardel. Yeah. Yeah. I'll give that's, 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 a, that's an interesting paper. question. That was a hard, hard one, actually. I, knew, yeah. I nearly got there, though. I knew Jardim. I went Jardim. Jardel. Mm -hmm. That's the one. That's the one. Yeah. Bolton used to buy big names sometimes back in the days. Like Bolton oh, were a sort of, yeah, they, I wouldn't say a big team, but they're okay. back in the back in the Sam days, they had JJ Acacia for God's sake. I think I that's know. if Stefano save say if we're right. I think the when he said um Fortalesi, that kind of gave a bigger gave a little bit more of a bigger clue as to who it could be, because there's not not no, many players not, that that Not many Brazilians play for both. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, but um, it's interesting. Yep, yep. It is cool. Well, um, tomorrow is our next game. I oh yeah, know. we're playing tomorrow. Who would have thought? How about that? It feels like we haven't forever. spoken about a game. Yeah, when's the last time we actually spoke about a game? Yeah, <laughs> actual exactly. Not it's almost like nonsense, bullshit, and, and now we're gonna have, Who's we're gonna your have favorite sandwich making footballer? Tearless, <laughs> <laughs> he played for Bolton, <laughs> yeah, who yeah. played for Bolton, yeah, yeah. And now we're gonna but, have a situation too. where we're gonna have that, to, like, we're gonna be speaking on games almost every three days, so it seems like coming yeah. up after this. You know, That's what was saying. Four days, yeah. you know, twice a week, two, three times a week almost. Um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that break <laughs> was good. Levels. How about Mason that Mount? Good. Mason mm -hmm. Mount getting the goal today. Sorry, I know some people don't like. Oh, uh, did time. they win? Did they? No, no, uh, I don't know if anybody wants. We only have we only have a few heads in, in the chat. I think everyone's one, one. sure they'll all know. Yeah, they'll all know. Yeah, yeah, it was one one. Uh, no, it's uh, one one. It was 1-1. They scored in injury time, United, and about two minutes oh. later, Brentford scored, made it 1-1, and then... Oh, uh, yeah, Brentford. Brentford, that's what we were playing. Yeah. Brentford yeah. could have won it. Could have won it. Yeah. You know, you're getting slapped up all over the place recently. It doesn't matter what they do. You know, it doesn't really matter. You know that guy, actually, that we've been talked about? Um, Amarim? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he, one, uh, one of his guys... That he had a lot of success with was Bruno Fernandez. So cheeky bid for Bruno Fernandez. Anyone? <laughs> no. Anyone taking Never. Bruno at Liverpool? No, no. Never. To replace Mo Salah? No, no. Okay, just no. thought I check. Just thought I check. I he actually looks that. like uh, Fernandez. The Almiron, Almiron Giza. He actually looks a little bit like him. He got that dark. Day. He's younger oh, than Alonso, gosh. by the way. He's Day actually 39. younger than Alonso. He's um, like we're talking about this last night. How 
there's no older elder statesmen uh, kind of manager types you know out there like the, the kind of the you know the the what we call them like the, the Ancelotti's or whatever but this they, we're getting really young now when we're talking about 39 year old 42 year old managers it's a bit crazy that these are the big guys these are the main mm-hmm. people like the army's yeah. only about what 45 maybe something like that yeah 40 yep, yep. Yeah. something like that they're all like these some of these guys are younger than me like amram's younger than i am that's, that's uh-huh. oh it sounds that's like norman crazy. by the way norm's in the house norm no right? norm um says he's just watched the game how Brantford did not win that game is ridiculous 5-1 would not have flattered them mm-hmm. for sure. horrible decision yeah. always Chelsea always got one ready you always got it always got the beer ready for you um, no, there's a, hor- a horrible decision in the um Chelsea game apparently yes yes so with the, like a, with a penalty a or a, yeah a red card a red card yeah 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 apparently just like basic kind of like real horrible like how did you get that wrong kind of decision so okay so we've yeah, already it was had... a, it was a, it wasn't a red wasn't a straight red it was like a yellow it was the second it was yeah, the second yeah. yellow yeah i've but... seen people losing their minds over it already it's not a surprise man <laughs> the way that things yeah. go you know like i said uh, i'm still i'm still scratching my head as to why bruno didn't get another didn't get two yellows in in that FA Cup matchup, you know, mm-hmm. I'm still, I'm still not not sure as to why he didn't. Whether he could have got it for descent alone, much mind less control. That. But CIA, CIA mind control, apparently. I guess he does. I guess he does. He yeah. is a master he, splinter. Apparently, there must be like you know when like in the cartoons when they'd look in your eye back in the day, you'd look in, and you get that you get that swirly thing. Mm-hmm. That must mm-hmm. happen to refs because Bruno Fernandez can walk up to a referee and basically call them a bleep 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 for like five seconds and then walk right. off. And and, the referee, the referee and be like, "Now, now, don't now, Bruno, now mm-hmm. don't be doing that, now, Bruno. You know, don't because you know, don't be doing that." But yeah, captain's armband plays for Man United. Yeah, it's yeah. like I've said this from day one that. The only thing I would bring into football at the moment that I would think might help or might change anything is that when they go to VAR and you've got, you know, when the ref has got his finger in his ear yeah, and they're doing all that stuff and they're basically being hounded around the pitch, I think what should happen then is if they're in consultation, that the ref should go and stand in the center circle yeah, and, o- and only captains are allowed to enter the center circle. Mm-hmm. And anyone that's not a captain that goes into the center circle gets yellow carded. Mm. You know, so it's an interesting little rule. rule yeah, um, I, because rotation. yeah, because you got these guys coming up to him and abusing him and shouting, well, "Get the ref, stand in the center circle." Might be if a push, not, a bump or a push from from if I was playing, might be a bump or a push of a player getting nudged into that center circle. <laughs> yeah, no, but I mean, anybody comes in wagging the finger and shouting, and you know, I want this, and no, fuck off, you're the guard, yeah, you're not right. a captain. You're not a captain, get out of the center circle, you know, stop, you know, I mean, just yeah. try and entertain or um, introduce some kind of discipline to the, the thing because, look, as a ref, you have to be used to a player going, oh, fuck off, ref, will you? That's normal, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. just fine. It's like, Foul draw, you know, because you're on a pitch, right? You're in the heat of the moment. It's like language is fine. Bad language mm-hmm. is fine on a pitch, right? Mm-hmm. In terms of like, it's off, you know, oh, oh, F off, will it? Come on. But when you turn around and you walk up and you're pointing and you're shouting, you're, that's different. You know what I mean? That's a completely yeah, different. Yeah. And that's, mm-hmm. you know, it's more like, physical you, than, yeah. yeah. It's mm-hmm. more pointed, you know, but it's like, you mm-hmm. give, oh, fuck off, ref, will you? It's just part of the game, you know. That's a but, yeah. When the captain turns around and is ball and abuse at you, mm-hmm. I think it should be worse punishment for a captain rather than um, more leniency. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. if a captain gets you know dissent or abuse and like you're the captain, like that should be double points for you. You know what I mean? For you know, yeah, 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 yeah. 
But that's the reason you know, why I thought that like Bruno, when he grabbed the um when he grabbed the sideline official or um the flagsman on the sideline that time, I thought that he should especially be taken off because like as an as the captain. You should you should not even re- you should be the the ideal yeah, you know, com- completely role model it's, on the pitch to respect yeah. the referee. If you're over here grabbing um, officials like that, then you're not exactly setting a good a good uh, testament for or you know example for the rest of your team as to how you should be conducting yourself. But that's just again that's just my opinion. Yeah, but I think. No. Um, okay. What it is, it's weird. On the rules, it's like you, you have to, you're walking on broken glass. But when you look at refereeing decisions, it's like all over the place, you know. It's like a lot of players get away with certain conduct and stuff like that. Bruno Fernandez, number one, he's always doing something, but he never gets a red card. So <laughs> that's the way football is nowadays, you know. They've, they've got a new rule now as well with the ball boys and girls that you have to put the board on a cone or a little oh, yeah, plate. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, you yeah. can't hand the ball to the guy now. You can't hand it to the player. I think that Origi, <laughs> the Origi Trent goal sort of got them to do that as well. Hmm. Alonso, Alonso was one of the or people what was, that brought in the multi ball thing as well, though. Who he was it? Remember the, who was the yeah, um yeah. who was the ball boy that like he like pretended like he could like he ended up like there was one ball boy that like. They needed a quick corner, or they needed a quick throw-in, or something. And he was like, he like pre- pretended not to like be able to. Yeah, I ball. remember. I remember Chelsea, the yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah, and he got Chelsea. booted. Who was it? Kicked yeah. the ball, boy. Was it? Um, someone kicked the ball. Hazard. Boy there. Hazard. Hazard. Hazard kicked the ball, boy. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, but that guy he, yeah. now multimillionaire. Uh, he set up his own drink business or something, and uh, yeah, I, yeah, that I ball, boy. Did. Yeah, 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 he did. He sued yeah, him or something, true. right? I think he sued him. I, maybe Byron did end up losing today, by the way. They did. Lost 2 0 to Dortmund. They're done. Yeah, Who you know what's funny? He should have gone. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm but sure no, this, that's I'm funny. Not, I saw, not, I, yeah. No, sorry. I saw that story about a year uh, Well, maybe I say about a year ago. It was probably about five years ago now. Mm-hmm. But that, um, uh, yeah, the headline was like, Remember that ball boy that got kicked by Eden Hazard? Well, now he's a millionaire with his own vodka business. It's like, hang on, wait, what? What did I just read? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Look yeah. at it again. It's like, no, no. Actually, yeah, he was like by the age of twenty-two or something. He yeah. was already like, you know, a paper. He probably may have lost it all by now. Who knows? But yeah, yeah he it was a vodka or something. Like Jacob's a drinks company. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. yeah, but it was like, right, okay. Yeah, he um, became a young entrepreneur or whatever. And went off, but yeah, that multi-ball system is. I think Alonso was one of the guys that wanted that, where you have like the ball. Like this, it's just boom, 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 right back into play, right back into play, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. quickly as possible. Because mm-hmm. remember, back in the day, like the ball would go into the crowd. Oh yeah, they, it, yeah. Even though there'd be balls everywhere, you know. Yeah, you footballs everywhere. Watching. You had to stand and wait for the ball to come back from the crowd. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So because like, sometimes you know, sometimes those people in the crowd will throw them onto the pitch. Oh, you keep you have, nice. yeah, it was yeah, funny so though. Trying to waste even more time by throwing it onto the pitch because now you have two two balls on the on the pause. But the thing two. I made about well, yeah. But the thing I made about this before was, and I know it's not always it, it will have been issue in the past, right? Mm. But now with this multi ball system, the ma- if you score a hat trick. You, get, you used to get to keep the match ball. Well, you still keep the match ball, right? Because you mm-hmm. scored a hat. Yeah, I know where you're going but, with this. Yeah. Yeah. Now, there's, a, highly, there's a high, highly, uh, whatever, I percentage like chance yeah. that the ball you're you're walking away with, you didn't score any goals with because it was just the last ball thrown onto the pitch from the multi ball system. Because mm-hmm. you can't actually sit there with, yeah, I, that's the ball I stuck past Seaman three times or, you know, the, you know, the, 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 the Seaman reference there. David yeah. Seaman, by the way, played for Arsenal. But, you mm-hmm. know, um, it, it's just, it, that would be a thing, like, say, there's some guy from the World Cup, no, that's the actual ball that I hit. Yeah, that's the one. Whereas, this, it's like, that's just the last ball that got thrown on. Oh.
Brian, you there? Yeah, I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, a, yeah, yeah. It dropped out. Oh, it, it went dropped to low out. Power and mode. Yeah, yeah. No, I, yeah, you're, you're. Uh, sorry, it just went to low power mode. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I've gone again. Okay. Well, we're landing the old. Um, yeah, we're landing. Seven. I know, I know, I know. Sometimes, um, sometimes our co-pilots, uh, you know, start reminiscing about the old days. No, just <laughs> telling us the stories and such. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's what people tune in for. That's what they tune in for. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Um, haven't seen Tracy Neville in a while. Yes, oh. we haven't seen her in a long <clears throat> time. Not saying that we're asking for her to join us at all, but you no. know. <laughs> Don't don't do it, man. I think she's one of those psyops people that when you mention their name, ten seconds later they appear in your chat. Like oh she's yeah, one of those yeah, people. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so I will be allowing for everyone to go on to their final destination if this isn't their own final destination. Uh, I will say that we do have to do a preview. Um, the reason why I was bringing up this is because the game for me is at 6 a.m. So the oh, likelihood yeah. of me doing a uh, doing a preview at that time, doing a live preview, is very unlikely. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> just keeping it 100, people. So we'll figure something out. I'll most likely maybe we'll do like a. Um, We'll do a pre-recorded uh, uh, one that we'll do today at some point, but um, but I will get a preview out there for you guys, um, you know. Um, and can't believe it, but we're gonna be, you know, we're gonna be back to games tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward yeah, to yeah. seeing seeing um, the Reds play. But I will admit this: it has been it has been kind of nice. The fact that we've mm -hmm. been able to, like, you know, talk about other things other than everything pertaining to this title race or something like that, mm -hmm. you know, um, it's kind of like eased the nerves a little bit, you could say. But, um, but yeah, I'm I'm definitely looking forward to uh, to us taking on this matchup, which is not going to be an easy matchup. Brighton is a team that you have to worry about. You know, there's a lot of different things about Brighton that could concern anyone out there. Um, but, but yeah, I, I'm I'm looking forward to this matchup. And uh, is there anything that you want to say to the um, to our peoples here before we uh, before we get on to uh, whatever we have for our day, evening, or mornings? No, just uh, people are talking about. Are you doing a watch long? <clears throat> Twelve man isn't going to be doing a watch long, I would imagine. But the beige yeah. and reds are. Yes. So if you are going, if you're looking for a watch along tomorrow, Beige and Reds TV, I'm sure um, JK will put the link in there for Beige and Reds TV. Mm -hmm. They're doing they're doing a watch along tomorrow. I think it starts at quarter to two, ten to two. So that's where that's where you want to be to get your watch alongs. So I'll be I'll be yeah I'll definitely be in there tomorrow anyway. Yes, yes. and then um, yes, uh, Frank's going to be doing it after the game show as well. So yep. you guys can join. I'll put yep. both links in there, Bajan and uh, Franks. Yep. That's big up, big up. You know how we do. We're in a, we're doing a concerted effort to always be, you know, um, definitely supporting the other channels, the other uh, channels in the community, um, especially the ones that do actively, um, you know, support us or, you know, show us love as well. So I think it's important that we do that because by doing that, you know, we're going to help each other grow, but we also, we make, our community even more so tight knit and more so uh, solidified in the in the support that we should show for each other, which is important. So uh, JK's put in those links for both Frank and for the uh, Bayesian Reds uh, channels. And um, yeah, JK, is it, do you want to give a last little shout or something? You said, or did you say your last shout? I'm gonna, yeah, I just want to say enjoy the game tomorrow um, and uh, hope for a win. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, uh, party responsibly tomorrow and tonight, and, hopefully, you know. And big up the pops. <laughs> and big up yes, the pops. Big up the pops. Big up pops. Big up. And the chat. And, and yeah, um, and let's get this W tomorrow. Let's definitely get this yeah. W. 
Uh, please do keep telling people about this channel. Please do continue to, um, you know, bring other people into the folds, into, into the ranks of the Mighty Reds Army here because it makes a difference when you leave comments, when you leave the likes, when you, um, obviously, when you share, um, subscribing immensely helps. Every little bit you, it's, you can do helps incredibly, and it is all appreciated. And not only is it appreciated, it's something of, it shows, it shows a measure of, of respect between all of us and and we respect you as much as you respect us hopefully so um so we do all appreciate your love and your kindness by doing you know by spreading the word here so we will see you guys tomorrow whether it's at their supporter boozer whether it's um at anfield whether it's you know um at in your uh in your watch alongs whether it's you know at your friend's house or at your own home that you're having a party for Whichever is the case, may on the streets. Be, yes, on the streets, you know, mm -hmm. Rasta Crab, you know, streets of calling type thing. So, like, yes, whatever the case might be, I hope that it's, it's good tidings and definitely good fortunes. So, well, that's, uh, one, I, Nigel. Well, that's really I say, that's that's really nice thing to say. Sorry, Nigel. No. Oh, I appreciate that's really that. Nice thing to say. I appreciate that, Nigel. Definitely. Norman's going to the game. Oh, right? and yes, Norman will be at the game. Norm, enjoy the game, is. brother. Norman's enjoy, enjoy Norm the game. Real G. Norm is yes, the real definitely. deal, man. He's all into yeah, yeah. Norman is your Anfield correspondent, man. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Definitely is. Yes, he Just is. get a big sign with the uh, at Liverpool 12th man written on there. Yeah. <laughs> In the yeah, crowd. Yeah, cool. like, yeah, hold it up there. We'll look for yes. us. <laughs> yes, yes. Norman well, is, no, Norman, look, this is how much of a Liverpool fan Norman is, right? I was watching Frank Stroud the other morning where he does his uh, TV thing. Mm -hmm. He was talking about TV and movies. And uh, Norman was in the chat while he was in the middle of the queue for tickets to the Sheffield United game in the morning watching Frank that's, queuing that's, for Liverpool tickets. I mean, if that's, that's about as real it gets. That's yeah, about yeah. as real as a red. That's, that's a real red right there. I love that. I love to hear that. That's, 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 that's true, true, true brotherhood there. And that, along with waking up and um, watching a game at six in the morning, like yeah. we take it for granted in Europe, like the time <laughs> yeah. we just yeah. like it's three, four o'clock is cool, you know. Yeah, like, six a.m. I morning. went to the six a.m. I might have missed missed some of the game already, man. Yeah, I man. gotta, I, you know, I gotta definitely gotta like splash some water on my face and like you know get get my get my senses all together and like you know. And and tune in. I mean, heck, if it means going to the supporter pub, which I normally try to do, yeah, it's tough. It's tough. That's, <laughs> it's a job in itself. It's a job. In itself. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. But all right, until tomorrow, guys. I wish you guys all well, and I will. We'll have a show one way or another. I'm sure that we'll um you'll see me on either probably Beijing Reds or maybe even Frank's show or even um the Reds, uh even uh, Liverpool 12th Man show here. You know, if it's seven in the uk please do make sure to give a look for this channel and until tomorrow we bid you adieu take care guys Thanks.